on News Talk. Off the ball. This is News Talk. Yes, you're very welcome back to Off the Ball this Saturday. Neil Tracy here for the afternoon alongside uh, the Irish Independents, Dan McDonnell and Johnny Ward. We're streaming now until five o'clock. So welcome to all of those uh, watching us on uh, YouTube and Facebook and Periscope as well. Get your comments into us because we're here till five o'clock talking all things football, the international break coming up. David Myler's retirement yesterday is also a hot topic. Stephen O'Donnell is a surprise new manager of St. Pat's here in the uh, League of Ireland. And uh, Shamrock Rover is getting what you could call a rare win against Bohemians last night as well. Manchester United slipping up this afternoon, just one win in four games so far this season. There is a lot to talk about and uh, we also have a couple of early goals this afternoon in the Premier League. The first of those has come already just two minutes in at St James's Park. Newcastle against Watford with that goal and the latest is uh, Stephen Goldsmith. Newcastle nil, Watford one. Less than two minutes on the clock. The first meaningful attack by either side and the ball is in the back of the net. A shot from distance come in, it deflected into the box and fell to Will Hughes who just calmly slotted past Dubravka. The away side lead, it's Newcastle nil, Watford one. And that's not the only goal we have in the opening five minutes of this afternoon's Saturday. Manchester City and Brighton, who got that one? Shane Pennington. It's Manchester City 1, Brighton 0, the champions taking just two minutes to get themselves in front in this one. Alexander Sinchenko with the ball down the left-hand side, finding David Silva, and his cross was perfect for Kevin De Bruyne around the penalty spot to fire into the net. It's Manchester City 1, Brighton 0. And also to keep you updated, Ireland now 15-3 up against Wales at the Principality and Stadium in Cardiff, 32 minutes gone. A second try for Jacob Stockdale. He uh, picked up on a loose Wales pass that was intercepted and sprinted probably about 60-70 metres to go in in the corner as well. That conversion though was missed by Jack Carty. So good start for Ireland and particularly Jacob Stockdale after he was one of those who had a really, really disappointing day last week at Twickenham. Ireland 15-3 in front, 32 minutes gone. And uh, that's where we can say hello now properly to the birthday boy, Dan McDonnell. Thank you, Neil. John, Johnny likes to announce these things as he, as he, you know, yeah. as he arrives in the streets. Like you sort of like it's an, actually called manners. He just said happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> like an official PR. Yeah, but he waited, he waited until you were in here in the studio in just, front of just to someone say it. else. Just met just him in here. I did, I did text him this morning, to be fair. He did. It's a momentous day. What age are you? Uh, thir- 37 today, John. 37. Which means that you're going to be 37 in a couple of months as well. Yeah. God willing. Yeah, so yeah. we're always always a couple of months ahead of him. Do you find you're, you're slowing down in, um, when you're doing exercise and that? Is it getting uh, a bit tougher on the, the legs? I played Astro with you the other day. I was pretty sluggish, to be honest. So, you so can, was I, yeah. It's, yeah. It does get harder. It's creeping up on us. Well, I think, I mean, you mentioned the news story that's coming out there. Like, I think I've discussed this before. Good deflection yeah. there. Th- thanks very much. <laughs> but... Uh, like when you see lads like David Moyer retiring, who are like you know retiring from football, who are like four, five, six years younger than you. Yeah, and seven uh, even. He's thirty. All of a sudden, 30, I think because they're trying to figure out like how many like old how many players are playing say in the say in the League of Ireland or the four leagues in England that are actually outfield players. Keepers are a bit different. that are actually older than you now, and that's pretty depressing. It's, it's gone. It, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, there's a handful. There's a guy James Coppinger who's still playing with Doncaster. I think he's like thirty eight. Michael Doyle at Coventry uh, is it? Michael Doyle John O'Shea was one but then he retired Michael Doyle was at Coventry saw him last year he was in Notts yeah. County last year but there's a handful there I always, because your, your generation is gone your time is gone I always get slagged in here for like being young I'm 29 and like even I'm seeing players coming through in Premier League and stuff like that and you're looking at the years they're born in and you're just going oh god yeah well the oh 2002 kids like yeah. you know, there's a lot of interest around like young Irish players at the moment like Troy Parrott like born in February 2002 <laughs> you know you can't ask him he what, doesn't know what side Pat <laughs> is what, so, what side were your parents on <laughs> <You know? laughs> no they were busy you know like you know that, that's the problem that we face you know we don't, we don't have this reference point now at all you know, they're not even going to remember the hand of a bloody Terry Henry handball, never mind anything else. You know, you're trying to find a new reference point. I think that's They don't you... know pain. They don't know pain. You have to admire Ryan Giggs and Pirlo and players like that who probably did look after themselves, to be fair, to be able to play that long and to be able to play at such a good level as well. Um, it's, it's just become a no country for old men football. Um, and in the League of Ireland, as Dan says, very, very few players as well. Very few players, like, well into their 30s that I can think of. There's other reasons for that as well. I mean, a lot of them just, it's not worth it when they get to unless they're say, at a really good club like to get to the stage where actually if they haven't got a career or something going for them you know that yeah. like a lot of them a couple of years back a lot of lads actually would have been around the same age as me um, would have retired pretty early because there still is like a good sort of tax 
payment there yeah. for, for you know, the guys can take the best 10 years of their career but, when they quit. And I think when there was a bit of an economic downturn, there was a fear that maybe uh, maybe that offer might, might go at some stage and he had a lot of early retirements from like professionals in the league which is why there was almost a, a cleansing of a certain a, of a certain age bracket there is a kind of a, there was a sliding doors element I suppose to Stephen O'Donnell as well in that he could easily have stayed playing this season and um, I think he was badly missed for Dundalk in Europe now going on his record he may well have been injured for Europe but all of a sudden um you know he's gotten the same Pat's job out of nowhere. Really, it wouldn't I mean? Thirty three, isn't he? Thirty three. Yeah, he was. Wasn't he? He was certainly thirty two at the start of the season. So if he's thirty three and he was a player that probably would have played, they would have rotated him. Um, but I, I do remember talking to him earlier in the season. He said the thing he'd missed most was the Euro, was the European games. And um, Dundalk's midfield, they missed Robbie Benson, who was obviously injured, and their misf- their midfield was quite disjointed. Now. As it's happened, the teams that they've played have actually performed extremely well subsequently, so it's kind of a bit of a head-scratcher, but just the fact that Harry Kenny, um, like St. Pat's were huge favourites to beat UCD last Friday, uh, huge favourites, nobody would have envisaged them losing 3-1, and Harry Kenny is gone, um, I don't think anyone really expected no, to see Steve O'Donnell was at that game as an opposition scout for Dundalk, watching, mm. uh, watching UCD, and then he's, he's ended up manager within two weeks, so, but I, I suppose it is a trend, like, um, it, it, you know, there is a lot of young coaches, and it's not just here, like, you, you sort of see overseas that, like, there is a profile towards people starting younger in mm. management, like, you would I mean, I'm thinking of like Andrew villas Bowes and someone when he came on the scene and how young he was. And he was obviously slightly different, a slightly more academic route into football in terms of, you know, a bit of coach. Like the one and, that jumps uh, Eddie Howe is the one that Eddie jumps Eddie Howe, out. yeah. Like a really he was very young when he was properly in management. Yeah. He? and, and The guy in uh, Germany as well who got the team. Oh, really Nagelsmann, yeah. yeah. Like, so he, like, he was like 27 almost mm-hmm. when he went to Hoffenheim. So I think, you know, like Stephen Bradley's at Shamrock Rovers who was, who was pretty young when he started. I think he actually was at Arsenal with, at, with Stephen O'Donnell, wasn't yeah, he? he was, and Tim so, and seen Morris closes like that as well. So it is. It is definitely like a change, and I suppose like it's a, there's a flip side. There'd be older coaches who'd be a bit aggrieved at like you know we would have had Paul Doolan in our podcast during the week. You know maybe unhappy about not getting opportunities and experienced coach but there seems to be a move towards younger voices now getting their chance and maybe it's the same in other sports too maybe it's just a reflection of people always want some new ideas and some new innovators but like even someone like I don't know what David Myler will do now um, like where would he want to stay in football he's what 31 I think maybe David Myler yeah. but like there is actually there isn't that stigma there about maybe giving people coaching opportunities at that age whereas maybe before there might have been a bit of reluctance to do so and just on like what you were saying there talking about players retiring earlier and you were saying in the League of Ireland like in some cases it is just down to circumstances where you know you know you have a limited time at this game and mm. you have a life outside it as well and like not to bring it back to rugby constantly yeah. obviously I've been doing this Land of the Rising Scrum thing over the summer speaking to people from all the different countries and just uh, recording this week's one I spoke to Mario Sagario who uh, is a Uruguay legend played at Munster for a little, for a season just after the 2015 World Cup and he had been preparing to go to the World Cup this year with Uruguay decided back in May though he's only I think 33 played 70 like second highest number of caps ever for Uruguay decided he just couldn't do it and I was asking him yesterday why it was he was saying that since going back to Uruguay, he's essentially playing part time. He's getting up six thirty in the morning. He's training. He's going to work nine till five, and after that, he's going to university after work. Oh God! Like yeah. trying to balance that and going off to a World Cup and things like that. You know, there is a life balance yeah, that there's a, a lot of players of have to put together, and you know, they have to think about what they're doing not just in a year after they retire from football, but what they're doing long term as well. Yeah, and, and there has to be a, a quality of life issue. And like, it is very different. Like you, you mentioned probably the level that, that he was at. You know, it's not as if he's made the money to, yeah. that he can put it away. Yeah. And like, that's the problem that a lot of the lads sort of based here would face. And even in the lower leagues in England, it's obviously very different. But there's actually quite a few Irish lads who don't have clubs at the moment, the likes of, sort of Darren Gibson, Paul McShane, uh, Mark Wilson, a few who've been around a Premier League club. So... You'd imagine they probably don't feel the same pressures. Although, I mean, you never know what's going on in someone's life. But it's a very different s- scenario for the for the guys that are that are, you know, th- that they've been they've been earning maybe thirty, forty, fifty, sixty grand a year, depending, if even in some yeah. cases. And you know, it's not something they're going to be doing in three years' time. Like there's very when you think about it, there's very few industries where someone at twenty eight, twenty nine 
you know, generally that's when your career should be starting. That's when you should be moving up the Hitting ladder peak in life. Physically and everything. But when, when, if you're at that age and you realise that this thing that I do now, this job that I do now, I won't be able to do that in three, four, five years. I just, I, I just won't. And definitely not in 10. Um, it, it's sort of, you know, it makes things very pressurised. And I think even for young coaches here, like there's, there's, there's only a certain amount of full-time opportunities as well. As much as there's, you know, there's, the underage leagues have started and there is the chance for people to manage at underage level and young coaches, it comes to a point where even they can spend a lot of money doing their badges and then realise that maybe after one job, they, 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 they're not going to get another one. So it is an uncertain time, but at the same time, there's obviously a certain attraction. There's an addiction there when it comes to football that they all want to be a part of it. And I mean, someone like Stephen Kenny, I mean, I say that's a recent thing. I mean, someone like Stephen Kenny started at 27. Brian Kerr, I think, was a Pats uh, at 33, same age as Stephen O'Donnell when he started. So you never know where it can take you. Maybe, maybe there's a feeling now that coaching can take you places that playing can't. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean uh, those two examples sort of make that point. Talk about David Myler specifically in just a moment. First, though, we have another goal in the Premier League. League, Leicester City and Bournemouth. Derek Clark watching that for us at the King Power Stadium. Leicester City 1, Bournemouth 0 and it's Jimmy Vardy with the goal for the Fox. He's a simple route one ball it was from Ben Chilwell. Although there was Jimmy Vardy to meet the onrushing strike and he just hit it first time over the goalkeeper Ramsdale into the back of the net. Leicester City 1, Bournemouth 0. And our football coverage on Off the Ball is brought to you with thanks to Paddy Power for information on responsible gambling. Visit Uh Guys, David Myler specifically, though, announced his retirement yesterday. Um, had spent time of last season at Coventry, had been really trolled by injury for the last, well, for a lot of periods in his career as well, on and off. Uh, was, it, was it something you were surprised about when you um, heard it yesterday? Maybe surprised by the, the fact that he took the decision to retire. You know, there was... Yeah. There was you know, he definitely obviously had the ability to play on. I did speak to someone who watched Myler play, I think, in a reserve game last year, and you know, someone who really rated him highly, but but just felt that maybe they were looking at him and the legs were were maybe gone a bit. You know, that he just he'd lost something. And when you think about it, like there is a slight if only to his career in the sense that like he was obviously very talented. Um, well, I mean, he wasn't maybe naturally talented in the in the in the football sense, but like he was a very gr- very good athlete. And, and when he came on the scene at Sunderland, he looked like you know a, an excellent player. But he just suffered a couple of injuries at various times that just held him back. You know, so we we got glimpses of a of a of a run to see that he could be a good player, and then it almost seemed to be to be a shelf life of it, and then he'd suffer another setback and and so on. So I mean, he, he did in, in recent years when you think about it. it it's sudden when you think that. What is it? Two years ago in October, that Ireland had that win in Wales, yeah. and obviously, you know, we would have spoken about it before here, and John would have been like pretty, particularly critical of the playing style that night. But for someone like Myler to sort of to be a captain of Ireland in that type of a, in that type of game, I remember he seeing his him, ass off. I remember well, seeing right? him on the pitch. So, and it yeah. was something you could clearly see on that night. Actually, it was a huge thing for yeah. him personally. He'd never been a regular for Ireland, yeah. really. I mean, he never was, to be fair. But yeah. that was as close as he was in in that run. So from there to here to retire, I guess it is it is incredibly sudden, but. Um, I, I don't know what his, I, again. I don't know what his situation is, but he's some a lads. Confident guy, like I think he'll be yeah. fine in life. It's just that corkness, isn't it? Yeah, he was. He's actually strongly linked FIFA. with the with the League of Ireland move late, yeah. very late in his uh, in the last month or so, and uh, that obviously didn't happen. Loves his FIFA, but um, you you I've never met him. Dan Dan has spoken about him. He he doesn't kind of lack um, confidence by all accounts, and um, it, it will be interesting to see where he settles and where he goes career wise. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, he was he was a real athlete, you know, more so than I suppose. Uh, a really properly technically gifted footballer. He's a bit of a networker, you know. Through through his uh, his FIFA stuff, like people might if people are not aware. Like I think he, he's like, seriously good. He's like he's, yeah. he's, he's, he basically plays it professionally now, yeah. like to, to a degree, you know. And uh, I think didn't he um, retires from that? I think uh, and I, I think, he, I think he, like he's kept on good terms with people he's met along the way. I'm pretty sure that when Declan Rice call, got called into the England squad, I think he might congratulate him. And then after around. 800 abusive messages later he swiftly uh, he swiftly pulled back because uh, I think I think there was like a YouTube because he does a lot of YouTube stuff and I think he had a, when Rice was in the squad there was like a 30 minute YouTube clip of Myler and Rice playing you know playing in FIFA or something so I mean he actually probably does have something going on that really did he need to just go and chase that other contract and, and play down the leagues or whatever whereas if he, he I don't know again I don't know what his financial situation is but he might be able to pursue this and, 
and and not need it, mm. you know. And this is the thing, like you, you know, he didn't. Well, he did, he's very well off. Like you, you, you would think so, John. You never know, though. Like you never know. Maybe. Like you, you hear stories and and you, of, of guys who who should be, but if someone is relatively clued in and like you know, obviously he's got his family influence there, so you'd imagine mm. that he that he would be. Um, guys who play in this era now, who play any level of Premier League and Championship football in this era, they don't necessarily need to tear it out, you know, to drag it out. As I said, like it's different at a lower level when you don't have that security, but if you've had a bit of the good life, you know, and, and a few good contracts, you're probably not under the same pressure. Um, I, I, think, I think as well, he, he's a little bit symptomatic of the midfield kind of milieu that Ireland has been since Roy Keane retired. We really haven't had any recognisably very good midfielder. It's just been... You know, who could you say has kind of stamped himself on as being an Irish, even uh, like a proper Irish player that you could say was has been excellent? James McCarthy's been injured, and you're kind of crying out for a midfielder to come through now and to basically take the mantle in that area because even now, you know, we're kind of we're looking to Horahan to maybe step up. Um, it's hard to replace. I don't think you'll ever replace a Keane. I think that's we a high, anyone it's even a high bar. Near it, though. Do but, you know, know what I mean? We've, we've nothing like. Um, we've had a lot of competent midfield mm. players over a period of time. We've had very good careers. Like I mean, it's I mean that's the highest bar. I mean that's best player in the Premier League bar. You yeah. Know? But it's it's about that all round package, and it would be an excitement around Myler when he went to Sunderland when he was younger that he was a bit of a late developer as well. Mm. Um, he wasn't someone that was over there at 15, but you know, you know that was the parallel that was drawn. But I, I, like he probably just wasn't as you know. I, I don't know. Injuries never probably in, injuries halted him before he could really get going. But I'm not sure if he was ever that all round type of player yeah. like Keane was. Yeah. Now uh, we do have another goal in this afternoon. So far, it has come at the King Power Stadium again. Leicester and Bourne with Derek Clark. Leicester City 1, Bournemouth 1, the Cherries respond almost immediately with a goal from Callum Wilson, a terrific goal it was too, Ryan Fraser with a terrific ball into Wilson, he beat the offside trap and he simply dinked the ball over the onrushing Casper uh, Schmeichel to make it Leicester City 1, Bournemouth 1. Now uh, Stephen Elliott has joined us on, sto- on Skype as well, Stephen good afternoon. How's it going, Neil? You okay? All right, lads? Hey, Stephen. How's it going, Stephen? How are you? Stephen, we've been talking about uh, David Myler there. I'm trying to do the maths in my head. Was there any crossover when he was a kid at Sunderland when you were still there? No, he, he, I think Roy took him to the club not long after I, I left the club. Oh, yeah. Where, uh, yeah, he'd done quite well at Sunderland, to be fair, when he first went in there. He was a little bit raw and kind of rough and ready, but I think the, the supporters appreciated what he brought to the club and obviously he set himself up for a really good career there. Yeah, were you surprised yesterday to hear about the, uh, the retirement? I was a little bit surprised, but obviously I was aware of the in- obviously having a lot of injuries myself in my own career. You obviously kind of look out for lads that pick up similar injuries, and I know he, he had a lot of problems with his his medial knee as well and other parts of his knee, and I, and I know the problems that can kind of exist long term with them type of injuries. So in a way, I was surprised, but at the end of the, at the end of the day, I'm sure he's got he has a young family, and you you'd be advised by doctors and all if you continue playing when you're under that kind of, putting your body under that stress long term and can do you more damage than good. And I heard you speaking earlier on regarding himself going forward as well. I'm sure he seems like a bright lad and I'm sure he, he won't he won't struggle kind of for future kind of things to kind of keep him occupied. When you came back to the League of Ireland uh, sleeves as you're also known, um like <laughs> was it hard to accept that kind of I suppose decline in your own um ability that you would come to a level that, you know, was, was vastly inferior to where you'd been playing and Myler's kind of gone out um you know, on his own terms, quite quite young in his early thirties. For you, how did you find it when the body just wasn't um, able to do what it obviously used to do? But at the same time, you obviously had a love for it that imp- you know encouraged you to consider to, to continue playing rather. Yeah, when when I first came back, I, I actually hadn't really planned on kind of getting back playing. I kind of semi-retired in my own mind, and then because I obviously had really bad knee injury, and then I ruptured my Achilles when I got back playing at Carlisle and. I was at that stage, probably a little bit like what David was when he when he's t- I'm thinking, what am I, why am I doing this? And that's when I started thinking maybe continuing to play isn't probably the best kind of rule for me is to kind of look outside of actually playing. And but well, when I came back, I, I kind of got never lose the love for playing the game. And even now, I don't play anymore. Like, but you, you do kind of tend to kind of. You know, when you're watching games, sometimes I go to a lot of football games. You think I wouldn't mind playing, but you have to listen to your body. Do you know what I mean, Johnny? And, and it's I think he's made it. He's made the decision that I'm sure it, it wasn't one of them where he woke up yesterday or whoever it was the other morning and thought I'm going to stop playing. I think it was one of them. He's let go of his contract from Red and he's thinking, "Am I doing the right thing?" Because you do. Yeah, and it's not only like to continue playing when you've had injuries. It's not what you see is obviously the kind of 90 minute game. It's the not even the training sessions. It's the kind of prehab. The kind of rehab you have to kind of look after your body to kind of make it 
able to kind of continue training. Even when I played in Ireland, I had to do a lot of stuff on my own in the gym because it was part time just to be able to even play at that level. And I knew my body wasn't able to do what it, what it was what I used to be able to do. And like you say, frustra- I wasn't really that frustrated. I was just happy to be moving again, to be honest. And as I said, it, 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 in a way, it was a way of keeping fit for myself. But no, I think he, he's made this decision and I'm sure he spoke to his family and he comes from a sporting family, like you've mentioned. And I'm sure he's, he's asked for advice from his father and other people that he knows in the game that may have retired early. So, uh, listen, he's made a decision. It's it's quite sad. Well, not sad, but he's he's 30 years of age. Most most people probably like to continue a little bit longer. But yeah, you can look back in his career with great pride. He's played for some really big clubs. He, he had a great stint playing with the national team as well. And he see, I don't really know him personally. I've had a few kind of little kind of conversations with him over Twitter and that social media, but he seems like a good guy and I'm, I'm sure he won't have any problems in the future. Stephen, like we were, I, I think you heard some of us before before you come on there and we were talking about you know, how lads maybe, some lads, it seems to be, I don't know, people are retiring a small bit earlier these days and they have various reasons, but I was going to ask you, because obviously you were over at Man City as a kid, how much do you admire someone like Glenn Whelan who's still doing it? Because, you know, from your generation and, and from your group of lads, I mean, he is... He has he has somehow showed a great endurance in his body and his fitness to keep going. Yeah, Glenn. Glenn's a one one of like he's he's one of a million really. I lived with Glenn for like four years. I see you were really good friends, me and Glenn. And I said, there's a week. He's 25. I'm 25. There's actually exactly a week between us. I'm the sixth of January. He's the 13th of January. So we used to go out on the piss. To, oh, excuse me. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Stephen. We used to go on the last Steven. to get out when we were young and uh, it was like kind of a joint birthday celebrations. But now he's, listen, he spoke to me actually before he went up to Hearts and obviously with me spending a bit of time there, he asked me advice about the club and a part of his reason for going up there, he wanted to play a, play a first team football where with his international kind of football in mind because he could I'm sure he could have went off lower leagues. I'm sure there was a lot of clubs interesting but Hearts is a really good club and you get to play playing some really competitive games there and, and he has a chance of winning winning a cup going on a cup run up there and like, like last week he would have made his debut last week at Celtic Park and he's, he's 35 and that would have been a new experience even for himself kind of playing playing there and speaking to him he's really excited about the kind of year ahead up there and I know he's, he's starting there today from, but to, to, to continue playing at the level he is, is he's one of these guys that even when we were in the youth team you know when you get a knock in the leg like me, Paddy, Paddy McCarthy will all go down holding the leg <laughs> he just he just run through knocks it was like his body was just made of like kind of I don't know bricks or something. Like you couldn't. If he was feeling pain, he never he never showed pain on the pitch. Like even in, I always remember thinking of the U team games. No, because he was he used to play in midfield. Not to be a lot of tackles flying in, and I'd be thinking to myself, no, from up front, thinking, geez, I'm glad I don't play in centre midfield because like. I never made a tackle in my whole career, but <laughs> we- Wheeler would be flying into tackles, and he'd, he'd, the other guy would be left in a bundle on the floor, and he'd just get back up and walk out. We had him and Joey Barton in, in centre midfield together at times, and listen, I wouldn't have liked to play against them two because the two of them could really kind of dish her out. Yeah, like is it is it a natural athleticism to a degree? I mean, I had a piece with Paddy McCourt in the paper today, and he mentioned about Scott Brown at Celtic that like Scott Brown could nearly not train for six weeks and he'd come back in and he'd still be up to top of the class in terms of his, you know, all of his endurance runs and stuff. Is, mm. Do you just come across lads in football that actually, they just they just seem to take it better? Yeah, and I'd say with Glenn, I think there was a point in Glenn's career where he thought, you know what, I, I can kind of get a little bit more out of career and something clicked with him and he start, I think he got a little bit leaner and he, and he got, got a little bit more kind of, I don't know, he was able to get round the park a little bit more but again, it, it's, it's credit to himself because he looks after himself eat and living right and like I've said this before I mean you don't see any kind of really bad press he just gets on with his business and listen to play play in the Premier League for so many years like he did then it's it's a credit to himself and and, he, and his attitude uh, yeah dude we're just going to go around the grounds and get a couple of updates guys uh, we'll take a quick ad break after that Chelsea and Sheffield United there has been a goal in that game at Stamford Bridge Andrew Cheel Chelsea 1, Sheffield United 0, Azpilicueta with the cross from the right, Abraham with the first header, the ball fell loose, Abraham was onto it in a flash, half followed it from about 6 yards, straight in the back of the net, easy as you like, Chelsea 1, Sheffield United 0. Also the latest from St James's Park, Newcastle and Watford, Stephen Goldsmith. Newcastle nil, Watford won a lively opening here. The visitors took less than two minutes to score. Will Hughes received the ball of the box via a deflection and calmly slotted past Dubravka. Newcastle almost responded instantly. A ball across the box to Almiron, who seemed certain to score, but a heavy touch allowed Ben Foster to race out and block. Back at the other end, Andre Gray has missed a good chance to make it two. At St James's, it's Newcastle nil, Watford won. And also in the last couple of minutes, we have 
a goal at the London Stadium. West Ham and Norwich. Guy Swindles. No. No, we don't have that just yet. What we will take, though, we'll take a halftime report from the Principality and Stadium, Principality Stadium in Cardiff. Will O'Callaghan watching Ireland and Wales. Half time, it's Wales 3, Ireland 15. Jacob Sockdell's 15th and 16th international tries of Ireland 12 points up at the break against an experimental Welsh side in Warren Gatland's last game in charge here at the Principality Stadium. The Ulster wing crossed in the left corner in the 18th minute after an initial burst from Dave Kilcoyne led to fullback Andrew Conway making an incisive run before releasing a perfect pass to the on rushing Stockdale. And the 23 year old sporting a new haircut this week gathered an attempted shingler offload 10 minutes later and powered for the line down the same wing. Jack Car Carthy starting for his country for the first time on the occasion of his 27th birthday, converted Sockdale's first try and also gave Joe Schmidt's side the lead in the 8th minute with a penalty from 40 metres out. Wales' sole score off the opening half was a 15th minute penalty from Jared Evans after Peter O'Mahony was punished for not rolling away. In the Irish pack, Kilcoyne has been the standout performer with the prop putting in an all-action first half. At the break here in the penultimate World Cup warm-up, it's Wales 3, Ireland 15. Yeah, thanks, Will. Uh, that is uh, second half just getting underway. What a difference an old haircut makes and a week for uh, Jacob Stockdale. Two brilliantly taken tries. We'll have more uh, updates from the Premier League coming up. Actually, we can go back to the London Stadium now and we can get that update from uh, Guy Swindles. West Ham 1, Norwich nil. Not much between the two teams until the 24th minute when Anderson released Masuaku, appearing at pace on the left-hand side. He reached the byline, lovely cross, and stretching, there was new signing Sebastian Haller to tap home his third goal of the season. West Ham 1, Norwich 0. Yeah, so approaching the half hour, all those latest scores are Chelsea 1, Sheffield United 0, Crystal Palace 0, Aston Villa 0, Leicester City 1, Bournemouth 1, Man City 1, Brighton 0, Newcastle 1 0 down against Watford, and it's West Ham 1, Norwich 0. We'll be back for more after the break. Off the ball on News Talk. Alive and kicking with Claire McKenna. Coming up on Alive and Kicking this weekend, we're constantly told that we shouldn't take our mobile phones to bed with us, but if you can't say goodbye to it, I'm going to be joined by a sleep expert who'll tell you what you should be listening to to get those Z's. And I'll be joined by Molly Carroll, who'll tell us what it's like living with inflammatory bowel disease in your early 20s. And clinical psychotherapist Stephanie Regan on why anxiety in students is on the rise and how we can handle it. Alive and Kicking. Thanks to Repromed. With me, Claire McKenna, this Sunday from 9 a.m. On News Talk. Productive afternoons with Harvey Norman. Need more you time? Ask about our range of large capacity washing machines with quick wash functions in Harvey Norman today. Now, where's the remote? Go, Harvey, go. Movie buffs and sports fans are about to clash because the sale that stacks up is back. Switch to Virgin Media and get super fast broadband and TV with Virgin Media Sport and now with the choice of Sky Sports or Sky Cinema. All for an awesome 55 euro a month for 12 months. The sale that stacks up now on. See virginmedia.ie. T's and C's apply. See virginmedia.ie. New customers only. 12 month contract. Offer ends 2nd of October 2019. Link Finance was fantastic. It took all the hard work out of business loans. It's online, it's fast, it's very straightforward. It really is the future of business lending in Ireland. Paul Cummins from leading safety consultancy Sea Change is among thousands of ambitious Irish business leaders who now use Linked Finance to fuel their plans for expansion. Our game-changing approach means easy applications, quick decisions, dedicated account managers and business loans of up to €300,000 in just 24 hours. Unleash your ambition. Apply now at linkedfinance.com. Bruce Betting, one of Ireland's leading bookmakers. With best odds guaranteed on UK and Irish horse racing, Bruce Betting has you covered. And with the Bruce Betting app, we're always giving you more. T's and C's apply. Bruce Betting, in store, online, and now on your phone. Over 18s, please gamble responsibly. See dunlouis.net. This week at Dunn Stores, save big on back to school with some of their favourites for half price. Like Pity Baloo and Muller Corner 6-pack or Nestle cereals like Shreddies, Cheerio and Cookie Crisp, 500 to 800 gram. Plus, with their 10 or 50 grocery voucher, save even more. Dunn Stores, always better value. See online for terms and conditions, minimum spend required. Um, what keeps me up at night? Well, tonight it was text messages that read, I feel worthless. I want it to stop. And in the darkest hour, one that said, I don't want to live. See, I'm a volunteer with Crisis Text Line. 
trained to respond to texts from people in crisis. That's what keeps me up at night, helping them. Go to crisistextline.ie to become a volunteer today. Crisis Text Line is funded by the HSC and supported by Choose Radio. In a world where they said it couldn't be done, the impossible has been achieved. They've taken the perfect chicken breast sandwich and made it even perfecter. Uh, more perfect. Uh, uh, really, really better. How did they do this? Uh, could I have bacon and cheese on that, please? That's right. A little extra sizzle is now in store. Supermax new chicken breast sandwich. The best just got better with bacon and cheddar. Enjoy an unforgettable break with Air Arabia. Relax on beautiful sandy beaches. Enjoy exciting water sports. Play on spectacular golf courses and much more. Book today direct flights from Dublin to Agadir starting from €135 Euro return, including taxes. Visit airarabia.com. At Heineken, we like to think that life should be all for one and one for all. So if your team's had one of those games, why not meet the squad and relive it one last time? And whether you've lost or won, at the end of the night there's always room for one more tune. But if you're thinking about drinking and driving, then even one is one too many. After all, you only live once. Heineken. When you drive, never drink. Get the facts. Be drink aware. Visit drinkaware.ie. Thank you from the National Lottery. Every time you play our games, not only are you in with a chance to win, thousands of good causes all over Ireland do win. In fact, with just the last big lotto rollover alone, you raised over 18.6 million euro in good cause funding to support local projects and organisations across Ireland. Thanks for playing National Lottery games. Play responsibly. Play for fun. Switch and save at Carphone Warehouse. Save up to €120 on exclusive deals with three you won't find anywhere else. Get the sleek Samsung Galaxy A50 for free or the seriously innovative iPhone 7 for only €99. Both are available on a €30 month plan with three with all-you-can-eat data. But only when you switch at Carphone Warehouse. Any network, any phone, any plan. Only Carphone Warehouse. T's and C's apply. Offer subject to a 24-month contract. Off the ball. This is News Talk. Yes, so very welcome back to our Off the Ball Football Saturday, as usual, alongside Dan McDonnell of the Irish Independent and Johnny Ward also as well. A reminder, our football coverage is brought to you with thanks to uh, Paddy Power for more information on responsible gambling visit dunlouis.net. Now, earlier on this afternoon, we were offering up tickets to our uh, Off the Ball Roadshow in association with Cadbury, looking at the Premier League next week on uh, September the 4th, this coming uh, this coming Wednesday at the Board Gosh Energy Theatre. Roy Keane and Gary Neville will be our guests for our Cadbury Premier League Roadshow. Uh, an exclusive off-air event, tickets completely sold out. I think Boss. you made a mistake on this. You could have like sold them for double the price, maybe even treble, raised more money and everyone... The amount of people that have asked me to go to this gig, Roy Keane is still box office. It's just like everyone wants to be there. And what is it, 2,000 people? Borgash Energy Theatre. 2,000 lucky people. 2,000 lucky people. Great cause, and I think it's going to be a fantastic and two one. more, two more lucky people, because we're giving away a pair of tickets right now. Earlier on this afternoon, we asked you to identify this mystery voice who had, been giving, who had been giving his reaction after listening to Off The Ball's 17-hour All-Ireland Football Final special on Thursday. Who was it? was outstanding. He says so. A performance full of power, full of energy, full of passion. We'd all agree with him there, I think. Mm. Oh, Absolutely yeah. fantastic stuff. The winner, I can say, Aoife Fitzgerald from Sligo. Congratulations. There's a pair of tickets coming your way uh, for our uh, exclusive off-air event this coming Wednesday with Roy Keane and Gary Neville. So congratulations to you, uh, to you, Aoife. Stephen Elliott, how much would you be looking forward to hearing Roy Keane and Gary Neville going at it? <laughs> It's always interesting when the two of them go at her on Sky, I suppose. So I'm sure it will be box office. You know, Roy, he, lo- he, like- he likes playing up to a crowd as well. So I think he's more suited to that than uh, doing other stuff at the moment, isn't he? Kind of, I- I- I'm just surprised he doesn't do more television stuff, if I'm honest. That's, I, I think, um, I-, I was on here, you mentioned that 17 hour uh, performance. I was on here with Michael Lester and I, I wanted to get him on Joe Brawley because um, I-, I-, I find Joe Brawley um, quite hard work at times, to be honest, on, on TV. And I think he's- it's more about like, 
the persona and the the abstract of Joe Brawley than actually what he's saying anymore. He's become sort of bigger than like he's such an intelligent guy. Yeah. And I think with Roy Keane as well, because I think Roy Keane's anachronistic style of management is basically not going to get him anywhere anymore. And he's brilliant as an analyst. But sometimes you're wondering like does he genuinely completely believe what he's saying or is he just trying to be extremely you know um, anti what Gary Neville is saying or is he trying to be it's, it's to his little look Johnny isn't it that he does when yeah he it's speaking, not a little look that's that, a skull nah, <laughs> he has that little thing in his eye where he, he knows he's kind of made he's made everybody kind of yeah. think about what he said but he kind of he keeps a straight face for it as well but he, he used to do that when he when his kind of team talks well he'd say something and you'd be sitting there thinking he's serious but he, he's able to kind of keep that straight face which is obviously why I think he's very suited to doing doing that kind of well, the road show stuff and the TV stuff well, as well. It's funny you, you mentioned that like you think he's more suited to that because we had obviously Dame Delaney on and Dame Delaney practically um, wrote off his managerial career going forward. Do you think he could come back in? Listen, he, he obviously can because he's... Uh, I think... The job, if job was uh, sorry, if Roy was to go back into a job, it it have to be kind of a club that needs a lift, a club that is really kind of down and down in the dump, so to speak. Because he does, he it, wherever he goes in, he kind of has that presence about him, and he, he kind of I go back to his time at Sun, and obviously it was his first job, and it's probably his, the best job he did when he came in. When he came into was like the club was literally on its bones. There was. The, the city was dead. There was like businesses were kind of losing so much business because of the lack of interest in the football team because we were doing so poor. And then all of a sudden, Roy came in and it was just, it was like he was a god for a year or so. And I think he, he still has the potential to go in there and have an effect. I don't know whether he, he could be a, a long term, really good manager because eventually somebody will annoy him so much and he'll just fall out with people. But I think he still has that kind of spark and to go in and kind of get a reaction out of a team if they're, if they're struggling. But it's got to be the right kind of fit. It's got, I think it's got to be a club with a lot of passion and a lot of history behind it. He's, he's always been aware of the power of his... I mean, he's always aware of the power of his profile. Yeah. I think he always knows that when he goes into a room that people, people will are, are looking at him or drawn to him. Yeah. You know, I think he's not someone who, who slips under the radar. Like, I mean, he's, he, can, he can be very like, charming on a, on, a, on a given day and, and, and you know, use that to his advantage. But obviously then, you know, within a dressing room, he can have a completely different uh, It's funny. It's tone. funny. <laughs> no, it's funny you're saying that. I... I um, I met him there in Cork, no, at Liam, Liam Miller's as funeral over that weekend, and I, I got speaking to him, and I was there with my wife, and he was just chatting away to me, asked me how I'm doing, and vice versa, and that, and I had about 10 minutes, my wife was standing next to me, and she goes, Jesus, he's a lovely fella, isn't he? I said, yeah, well, this is this is the thing, that you don't, he has a kind of, he has a way of speaking with people, and he obviously has that switch that kind of makes him the kind of person he is, but no, he, listen, he, he's great, he can hold a conversation, I'm sure, if you've spoken to him before, he'll tell you he's great. He's very interesting. He's got loads of stories to tell, and he's, he's, he's look at the career he's had and the persona he is. But ultimately, I think when he's in that manager's role, he does have a kind of switch. And when when that goes off, anything can happen. I, I think that's a fair point as well. Like if you put Roy Keane in the middle three seats of a plane with two people that didn't know him, I'd say he'd be you know he'd be a lovely person. But what Dan said there is a great. That's point. a great reality TV show. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> What, what, what type of fee would be required to do that show? Roy on a plane. Who could it be this week? How like, long is the flight? It'd be like if you're taking that, oh, what's that pos, show? Pos, it's pos, like pos, taking pos, that carpool yeah. karaoke to a whole new level. It's like series two, it's Roy Keane on a plane. <laughs> Can you pull with Roy I, Keane on a plane? I wouldn't um, agree to it. But <laughs> what Dan says there, when he comes into a room, like say there's a football function or anything like that, everyone is watching him, everyone is looking at him, and that creates. Um, you know that you see yourself probably a bit differently then because you're you you probably start behaving differently because all eyes are on you and people probably expect you to be to conform to what they expect of you as well and because you have such a you're such an enigmatic profile as well i think it probably changes him as a person because Roy Keane has an awful lot of qualities i'm just not sure he's cut out for management anymore we have had a we've had a text come in here it might be something maybe to put to um, Roy Keane maybe on Wednesday night. I don't know your thoughts on this. Harry Arthur pulls out of an Ireland squad yet again for an operation but plays for Fulham last night. Maybe Keane was right to question his commitment about playing for Ireland. Would Coleman or McLean or any other Irish-born player pull out of an Ireland squad in the same circumstances? Arthur shouldn't be picked again is what Jim and Galway says. I, I think the, the, the story on that is that there was some kind of surgery delayed um, and so that that surgery has is, is going to be carried out during the international window. Now, Roy Keane might have done that once or twice in his international <laughs> career as well. To be fair, uh, he, may, he might have had a club manager who might have advised them. Oh, a bit of a procedure here needs to be done. 
Oh, what are you when doing? Can, when what can are we you, what are you doing now? in September? So I'm not sure if he be he can be fully, uh, you know, if if that if this, if this particular episode can be used. I mean, I'm not sure what he would have made of Harry Arthur getting sent off then for diving yeah, uh, for yeah, a second yellow yeah. card last night. Um, yeah, I mean, Harry Arthur's Irish career hasn't really hasn't really got going, and um, I, I think yeah, look, it does appear from WhatsApp audios we've heard that uh, Roy Keane would have been pretty harsh on him, but at the same time. There have been times when you, you you would think we haven't seen enough of Harry Arthur, and I would agree that probably James McLean would have would have a better attendance record with the same injury record. Mm -hmm. If you get me, um, pushing that on, I suppose to Irish squad in general and the international break coming up and the Switzerland game next week. Mick McCarthy trimmed down the the squad there recently. The big ones, obviously, Arthur missed out because he had his surgery booked in, but Shane Long essentially mm -hmm. just. Not picked. Came off the bench today as well. He's a, yeah, because Obafemi is, is, has picked up a knock during the week and wasn't on the bench today. So Shane Long on the bench today. But yeah, I think Shane Long being cut was the big talking point, and you know, just sort of making the point during the week. You know, it's like it's 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 still a bit of an insult for someone like Shane Long. I think, regardless of the fact he hasn't played. So I think you know he probably doesn't have a strong argument on the basis of what he's done this season. But the four players picked ahead of Shane Long in the squad would be McGoldrick, Robinson, Sean Maguire and Scott Hogan. You know, they don't have an international goal between them. They don't have actually a Premier League goal between them, although hopefully, you know, McGoldrick and Robinson can do that so we can play that Any jingle. Stage today. So we can play that music. We can play that play the music. But um and, uh, so it, it is a slight damning thing for Shane Long that with that in mind that Nick McCarthy has decided uh, I can still afford to do without you. It's still, I mean, he's never going to start the game, but you know, to have him on the bench and 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 to pull him in there. Now he ha he hasn't been consistent over the last couple of years. His goal record hasn't been great. Like successive Irish managers probably haven't really trusted him to give him that run in the side. Like he's again, he's never really been the Irish number nine. Shane Long, we we thought he was going to be on an, on a number of occasions, and then you know O'Neill preferred Daryl Murphy towards the end, and you know John Walters. So there's been. You know, there's been a, a very stop-start nature to his international career, but obviously the fact he's been left out of a final squad when he's fit, I mean, that's probably a first. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, a couple of goals to bring you up today, but we'll come back to the Irish squad. First of those at the King Power Stadium, a third of the game between Leicester and Bournemouth. At that one is uh, Derek Clark. Leicester City 2, Bournemouth at nil, and it's Yuri Tielemans with the goal. He won't get an easier goal all season. It was Jimmy Vardy initially on the touchline. He got the break of the ball from Steve Cook, and he simply squared the ball to Tielemans, who just simply rolled the ball into an empty net. It's Leicester City 2, Bournemouth 1. And we have had another goal as well at St. James's Park between Newcastle and Watford. Stephen Goldsmith. Newcastle 1, Watford 1, an equalising goal for the home side. A ball was put into the box from the right-hand side and when about four players all jumped up for the ball at the same time, it dropped down into the path of defender Fabian Scher, who just calmly put the ball into the bottom left-hand corner. Newcastle 1, Watford 1. Another goal as well at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea and Sheffield United, Andrew Cheel. Chelsea 2, Sheffield United 0. Tammy Abraham with his second goal of the afternoon. His predatory instincts paying off very well indeed. A long ball from the halfway line. The defender half controlled it, but he didn't get it anywhere near it. And Mason Mount there puts one wide of the post. But this on, on the previous occasion, Tammy Abraham did control it with his chest, took it past the defender, fired crisply low into the bottom corner. It's Chelsea 2, Sheffield United 0. Six games going on at three o'clock this afternoon, so probably more goals than we're normally expecting. And we've had we've had another one as well at the Etihad Stadium, Man City and Brighton with Shane Pennington. Well, it's Manchester City to Brighton nil. The second goal from the host coming courtesy of Sergio Aguero. A lovely move down this right hand side. Riyad Mahrez playing the ball into Kevin De Bruyne, and his cross was perfect for Aguero to take a touch and then smash into the roof of the net. It's Manchester City two, Brighton nil. It's going to be a momentous moment when that Irish player oh, score. When we get it. Do you remember the Simpsons episode where Marge she installed like the doorbell, but nobody would nobody would call it the door. It's just like, somebody call. I want to play the doorbell. Um, it's funny than the Irish striker thing because the under twenty ones on Friday, um, you may get the chance to see these new stars that kind of I think will potentially be Obafemi, maybe not so much either, but certainly Parrot if he's playing. Um, 
they may have more relevance kind of going forward for the Irish strike force maybe than the actual players that are in the Ireland squad because as Dan mentioned um, we've, we're just so shorn of players that have actually scored goals and Obafemi he has scored during the week obviously Connolly scored um, during the week as well Aaron Connolly yeah, he's, Aaron on the, Connolly, he's on the bench today for who might be who might be kind of a left-sided player, but like um, I think there's an element of people going to Tala on Friday. I could see this game actually sell out because Troy Parrott, if he's playing, who's actually seen him play? Mm. I don't even know how much Stephen Kenny has seen of Troy Parrott, being honest with you. I don't know if he's seen him play that much. And I think there's still an element of what's his best position. But if Troy Parrott is on the cusp of being you know, on this, in the Spurs squad, I'm not sure any of Ireland's strikers really would would be considered, if they were in that kind of Spurs level, mm. they wouldn't be anywhere near the team because Spurs are, are level above. So Parrott to me is like, there is a, a lot of a weight of expectation behind a young player because of just what he's achieved in terms of the reckoning he's at at White Hart Lane, I suppose, or at, at, the, at Spurs. Like. Stephen, um, they're on the, like, talking about striking options obviously there's great things coming through at underage level but are you worried at all maybe about what we have heading into that game against Switzerland I'm not I wouldn't say I'm worried because it's if you look at the the, the previous games at this campaign like Mick has obviously gone with Dave, Dave McGoldrick and I think he's probably going to stick with kind of more or less the same he might bring Robinson in alongside him considering the, the two of them played together at club level um, with Robbie Brady missing out but it's one of them. I think Mick, what Mick is thinking is now he, he's got a kind of quali- He's got a couple of years to kind of try and qualify for the for the uh, the championships, and he, he, he can't really. I mean, people are talking about Para, and I've seen Para play a few times. I watch him in pre-season, a couple of the live games in uh, pre-season, and he, he looks. To, he really looks a real talent, and he's somebody that's definitely gonna. It's. I don't think it's a matter of if he breaks into the sports uh, sports team. I think it's when he kind of breaks into that sports team because he's he's got huge quality. I, I remember Just watching on, on that. Please, would you have him in the Ireland squad right now? Because I'm I'm virtually I've never seen him play, but I'm virtually mm. convinced he's more talented than. <laughs> He has to be more talented than me. <laughs> it's a pretty important <laughs> clearly, caveat, though. That's, okay. I, I, that's I, I, something I, for the Johnny Ward I, I think he was. I think Steve was coming around to that point. I okay, think, would, you, would you have him in the Ireland squad? Because Mick well, is like, he needs to be... I don't agree that Mick, with Mick that he needs to be having done this. Or he, he, Troy Parrott, probably on talent, should be in the Ireland squad right now. Yeah, he's getting okay, to the point here. Okay, but... You have to see he hasn't played for the twenty ones even yet. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's one of them. Like that's obviously it's a big state. He's only seventeen. You, you don't. We all want to see. I'm sure we all excited about him because we. Let's be honest. We haven't really had that many great strikers over the year. Like war, like people are talking about him being a world class, putting him in the bracket, same bracket as Robbie and and kind of Duffer and that. But it's probably a little bit too much pressure. But I think listen. You got to give him a bit of time, and I think it'd be very unfair to kind of put him straight into the the senior squad without him actually playing for Spurs. Yeah, I think as a as a player in the squad already in the Ireland squad, you'd be thinking this guy hasn't even played a force team game. You got to Mick is probably thinking about protecting him. I'm sure Mick thought long and hard about actually keeping him into the squad because you can't ignore like you, say, you can't ignore somebody that's in and around the fringes of a team that qualif- uh, that that played in the Champions League final and he's there on merit like Spurs have sent players a good few years old and strikers out on loan because they see Para as a better fit than him so he's obviously in um, Pochettino's thoughts and I think we will see him this at some stage this season and listen he's going he's, he's gonna to come and play for him but the time's going to be right and like yourself Johnny I'm a little bit excited by him as well you, you want to see these young lads play and see how they cope and it's who knows? You could put him in there and he scores in his debut and everybody's thinking, oh, here we go, we've got a superstar in the hands. But I can understand him going into the 21s and getting a feel for that. And then if he does well there, which I'm sure he will, like, then who knows what's going to happen. But, but I think j- Mick has to kind of... But, but he was never going to play him against Switzerland, no, ever. Okay, right? no, just say even even one of the friendly games coming up, whatever. I, I'm, is, just gonna make a, I'm gonna yeah. make a prediction for you there. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Now, there's two things with Parrot. Firstly, he's had a lot of injuries this year at Spurs. Mm. And I think you can't underestimate that. Like he didn't he didn't go to the seven teens final, he didn't go to the 19s and he didn't go to the 21s too long and there was injuries and there's an element of the club protecting, protecting him because yeah. they think he's a serious asset he's had injuries, so first of all he needs to be here next week, which is by no means guaranteed I think if, you know, because he has an injury recently, so you can understand the club minding someone that's an asset I think the other thing, I, I wouldn't be shocked if after the Switzerland game because uh, we play Bulgaria the following Tuesday mm. I wouldn't be at all surprised if a number of senior players were were let go and there might be a scope to bring a couple of lads in for the Bulgaria game just to familiarise them with the camp now there's a difference between that I think that one of the issues you have with Parrot is that really I've seen Parrot play a bit I've seen him play for the under-17s team like he is sort of probably 
maybe in time he might be more of a number 10 player than a number 9 type player so that's a very specific role within a team and like just throwing him in there and saying you're a good player go and do it it might not be that easy for him because I think when he does play there's a sort of a bit of a duty of care responsibility from everyone yeah, but when that. he does play everyone's but expecting him all of a sudden to be like this this wonder kid that we've never seen Dan, and, you know it's, and it's, it's a bit unfair I agree you know? with you it's like you say when even when he did play for Spurs in the, in the pre-season games it was like kind of him or Harry Kane he was playing in that Harry Kane role like and that's that's the kind of main main role he, he took that role on I know it's only pre-season and Spurs may have kind of a few players that may have been away and missing but he's still playing that lead role against the likes of Juventus big clubs like that and, and playing really well in the games too mm. like you know so it's listen I think it's I don't think we get we can get too excited, uh, too disappointed about not being in. The, like like Dan said, I don't think he was ever going to play in the in the in the game on tour day. But you never know. Like like Dan says, if he's there's no reason why if, if a few injuries are picked up, you know what you know what uh, injuries are like in games and and training clubs. Players may go back to the clubs and Mick may say, you know what, we'll give him a little boost. So you know you just know. I think we just have to wait and see what happens in in the twenty ones game. But I just think. Let's enjoy him. He's only 17. We don't want to put too much pressure on him. But at the same time, it is kind of hard not to get a little bit excited by him. I don't think um, I don't think Obafemi will start. But the little I've seen of him, Obafemi with Parrot behind him, if he is that number 10, because Obafemi is very, very quick. Um, does it, it's we we should be excited by this because we've been it's been so long that we've had so little. And um, with Connolly as well, the strides he's made. He he could be seriously but good. Kenny if, if, spoke during the week about maybe he could actually play Fordham in the side. I yeah. think though, if you play Fordham in the Ida side, no, Ida and Afalabi. Afalabi's the one we haven't mentioned yeah. who who's gone to Celtic. Um, You'd play five up front, wouldn't yeah. you, Johnny? <laughs> Johnny? Johnny would be a very entertaining team. I'd, and if, I'd Johnny as manager would be the best six weeks of our lives. You know I'd what I mean? But that'd be that'd be the end yeah. of it. But um, I think he, like he Kenny did mention the prospect he could play like Fordham in the same team. But I think it's possible that in that event. It's, an Ida or a, an Afalabi might be that number nine through the middle if you get me yeah. Obafemi Obafemi's very, Obafemi's very played small played on the right well, played like, on the right for yeah. but again like I'm I, I'm not trying to poo poo it here but there is an element of Obafemi then missed out today um, clubs might have a different approach to letting someone go for, for a 21's. Tw- 21's double header particularly with Obafemi's recent record so I hope this comes to pass and all the players are here it's also the midfielders Dan, that we mentioned because Kenny's, like, Kenny's midfielders he rates them and it's going to be I, I genuinely think people go to Tala and just they'll be very excited by what they might see because of obviously the philosophy Kenny has, but like Lumpy, Roan, and these players. Like well, Ronan's injured, but um, Jason Knight is playing for Derby today. Yeah. He's 18, he played last week, and had actually the 3 0 down at half time play to Brentford, so it's not going so well. But, but Dan, I'm saying yeah. Sean McGuire's not in the Preston squad today, is he? He's, he's got he, a he's got a head injury, uh, he's got a head right, injury, concussion, he's got a concussion, is, yeah. yeah. But I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, he had a co- concussion, I think he came back and played, and mm. now he's out again with a head injury, so yeah. that'd be a slight concern because you sort of yeah. can't be flippant with something like that so exactly what I'm sh- saying so Shane Long so could be back to, in though on Monday morning as well that's what I'm thinking like because yeah. it's he's only he's quite thin up, up top and obviously I like Robinson though uh, Callum Robinson you know what I mean I think he's somebody that, that that should probably get a start in the Switzerland game from what I've seen when he when he's played for Ireland I think he I think will he's, you think he's, he's, he's a bit di- yeah, 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 I think he's got a little bit different, something different about him. He's quick and he, he can play in a few different roles across the front. And listen, when he played when he played at the Aviva the last couple of times, he kind of got people on the edge of the seat. I know he he kind of didn't score goals, but he scored some really good goals pre-season for Sheffield United. Obviously, still hasn't got off the mark, and I, I would doubt he got off the mark today against Chelsea. But you just don't know. But I think he's somebody that probably will, wouldn't be surprised to see him in the starting line but especially with uh, Robbie Brady being now injured yeah I think he'll start in the right I, I would have thought mm. he'd start in that right because Callum O'Dowd would be the other one who's mm. you know, he actually come on the bench for Bristol come got off the assist, bench for Bristol you got an assist yeah and yeah. He's, he's in the bad box there I think because he basically push for a move or he hasn't That's committed season, yeah. I think maybe yeah, no is that like is that enough to stop him playing for Ireland do you know what I mean well no it's just match fitness Johnny. Yeah. he just hasn't been playing yeah. See, I, I, uh, I, like I, Robinson has, has come in to the like you know I think Mick McCarthy spoke about it he's, he's, he's called it from a long way off that I, I, I think I doubt it the fact he's been involved in the last couple of games he'll be fine now but two weeks ago he was goose yeah. in terms of his lack of football yeah. um, but I think Robinson has started every game uh, and I think mm. there's every chance he'll be the, that right sided <coughs> midfielder attacker okay you know? guys I'm just going to bring us up to date with the half Halftime scores from around the Premier League grounds. Halftime whistles have gone uh, with the latest at Sellers Park, Crystal Palace and Aston Villa. Ian Beach. 
Crystal Palace nil, Aston Villa nil, but Palace have had enough chances to be ahead. James MacArthur probably had the best when he arrived late in the penalty area to meet a low cross from Geoffrey Schlupp, but MacArthur got underneath the shot and fired over the bar. Dead ball specialist Luka Milivojevic came close too with a low free kick saved by Tom Heaton. Cheku Kiate and Jordan Ayo have gone close too, while Palace goalkeeper Vicente Guaita has made two comfortable saves from Wesley. Crystal Palace nil, Aston Villa nil. Halftime whistle also gone at the King Power Stadium. Leicester taking on Bournemouth. Watching that one is Derek Clark. Halftime Leicester City 2, Bournemouth 1. Jimmy Vardy opened the scoring in 12 minutes when he lobbed the ball over Adam Ramsdale, following a long ball over the top by Ben Chilwell. The Cherries responded just three minutes later. Ryan Fraser's clever pass found Callum Wilson, who beat the offside trap and dicked the ball over Casper Schmeichel. Yuri Tielemans restored the Foxes' advantage in 41 minutes when he tapped home after good work from Vardy. Halftime Leicester City 2, Bournemouth 1. At the London Stadium where West Ham are taking on Norwich halftime, Guy Swindles. West Ham 1, Norwich 0. Entertaining first half, both sides looking to attack whenever they can. Just the one goal, Felipe Anderson, who's been outstanding in this first half, released Masuaku, great run, cross, and there was Sebastian Haller to pop the ball home for his third goal this season. At the other end, though, Norwich have had their opportunities too, none better than the one that fell to Campwell after good work by Aarons, but he just couldn't get his head over the ball, and it went over the bar rather than under it. They've also lost their skipper Zimmerman through injury. West Ham 1, Norwich 0. Now, Chelsea have made a really good start in their uh, Premier League game against Sheffield United at Stamford Bridge with the latest at half-time, Andrew Cheel. Chelsea 2, Sheffield United 0. Tammy Abraham's predatory instincts paying dividends. First of all, firing home a close-range half-volley from Azpilicueta's cross. And then five minutes from the break, Abraham's eye for goal paying dividends again. This time a good chest control took it past the defender. From 18 yards, Abraham cracked it right-footed low into the bottom corner. A Robinson header just wide of the post is Sheffield United's only real chance. Chelsea 2, Sheffield United 0. And at St James's Park, last we heard, Newcastle have got an equaliser against Watford at half time. Stephen Goldsmith. Newcastle won, Watford won. The away side will be disappointed. They didn't put Newcastle away after taking a very early lead. Will Hughes opened the scoring, slotting home from inside the penalty area. Kiko and Andre Gray both nearly added to that, both narrowly missing the target. The home side took advantage. A ball into the box was deflected into the path of Fabian Scher, who finished neatly into the bottom corner. Half time, Newcastle won, Watford won. And the last of our uh, three o'clock kickoffs that are at halftime is Man City and Brighton at the Etihad Stadium is Shane Pennington. Manchester City 2, Brighton 0, the hosts in total control of this game and they were ahead after just two minutes. Sinchenko finding David Silva down the left and his cross was perfect for Kevin De Bruyne to fire home. Then a whole host of chances were missed by City. Mares, De Bruyne and Silva all missing good opportunities before they did get their second goal two minutes before the break. Mares finding De Bruyne down the right and his cross was smashed home by Sergio Aguero. Manchester City 2, Brighton 0. And the latest score as well at the Principality Stadium in Cardiff. An hour gone, and it is Ireland 22, Wales 3. Ireland scoring a penalty try there just a few moments all ago. Is, all is okay. All, all is fine. Fun. We're off um, to Japan, and it's going to be good. We'll be back after the break. Join the conversation. Text us on 53106. Texts cost 30 cent. At Experts Electrical Stores, you always get smart advice. But now Whirlpool's award-winning W collection of cooking appliances takes smart to another level. With Sixth Sense technology for step-by-step guidance, you'll get perfect results every time. Ask about Whirlpool's W collection at your local Expert Electrical store or visit expert.ie today. Vitamins for teddy bears Your little teddy bears love raw yummy gummy bears Containing vitamins and minerals No added flavours or preservatives Roa Yummy Gummy Bears are now available from leading pharmacies. So tune up your Roa Yummy Gummy Bears and keep your teddy bears in key. Water Safety Ireland trained lifeguards do exactly as their name suggests. Last year they gave valuable advice to almost 100,000 people. Gave first aid 4,500 times, helped locate 300 lost children and rescued more than 300 people from drowning. Let them be there for you. This summer, at our beaches, lakes and rivers, always swim at lifeguarded waterways. Swim within your depth and stay within your depth. For advice, visit watersafety.ie. 
To celebrate the Rugby World Cup, Air's broadband sale kicks off now. With totally unlimited fibre broadband, plus you get the Air Sport Pack free. The home of the Rugby World Cup in Ireland. And it's on sale for an incredible $29.99 a month for six months. Call 1-800-500-300, go in store or visit air.ie. Air. Let's make possible. New customers only, $59.99 a month thereafter. 12-month contract, subject to availability. Air Sport Pack channels subject to change. Use of experience may vary. For full details and terms, see air.ie. Listen up, class. Aldi's Play Rugby Sticker promotion is back. Collect official Irish rugby stickers every time you spend €30 Euro in Aldi. Fill your primary school's poster for a chance to win one of two €50,000 prizes or one of ten €10,000 prizes for your school's playing facilities. Tomorrow, Japanese for beginners. Konnichiwa, kids. Konnichiwa, sir. Aldi, official supermarket of the IRFU. Full details at aldi.ie slash playrugby. Promotion runs 10th of August to the 8th of November 2019. If you're thinking of buying a residential rental property, ICS Mortgages can provide an excellent range of flexible buy to let mortgages, including interest only terms of up to 15 years. We'll also help you to refinance your existing portfolio and grow your property investments. Call 1890 427 427, visit icsmortgages.ie or contact your local mortgage broker. ICS Mortgages, the property investor's choice. Lending criteria, terms and conditions apply and are subject to change. The entire amount that you have borrowed will still be outstanding at the end of the interest only period. Dilosk DAC, trading as Dilosk and ICS Mortgages, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. At Heineken, we like to think that life should be all for one and one for all. So if your team's had one of those games, why not meet the squad and relive it one last time? And whether you've lost or won, at the end of the night there's always room for one more tune. But if you're thinking about drinking and driving, then even one is one too many. After all, you only live once. Heineken. When you drive, never drink. Get the facts, be drink aware. Visit drinkaware.ie. To celebrate Tipperary's two All-Ireland victories, tickets for Fela 19 are two for the price of one until midnight tonight. A limited number of tickets are on sale right now, and when they're gone, they are gone. The two for tip promotion for Fela 19 happening right now through Eventbrite and the trip to tip.com. The football stock market. Remember that first time on the terraces, where it all began. The heroes, the villains, the highs, the lows. All the while, you were learning. Now use that knowledge on Football Index. Join tens of thousands of fans trading the world's top players. Football Index, the game changed. App available, 18 plus, terms and conditions apply, gamble responsibly. Thank you from the National Lottery. Every time you play our games, not only are you in with a chance to win, thousands of good causes all over Ireland do win. In fact, with just the last big lotto rollover alone, you raised over 18.6 million euro in good cause funding to support local projects and organizations across Ireland. Thanks for playing National Lottery games. Play responsibly, play for fun. Across Ireland on 106 to 108 FM and at Newstalk.com. This is Newstalk. Good evening, I'm Tina Gates. The Sinn Féin president believes there is now a peaceful and democratic pathway to Irish unity. However, speaking on the 25th anniversary of the 1994 IRA ceasefire, Mary Lou MacDonald says the prospect of Brexit heralds the potential of a return to the physical borders of the past. Brexit demonstrates the absolute uh, danger of partition, the dangerous situation that this island has had now for almost a century since partition where a part of our island still relies on the whim of whoever sits at Downing Street, the whim of the Tory party, the whim of a parliament uh, far away in terms of our economic and social well-being. And that's not sustainable. That can't continue. There's been localised flooding in western counties after heavy rain overnight and Dublin's South Bull Wall was closed for two hours today because of a high spring tide. In County Clare, a man was rescued by firefighters after his car was stranded by floodwaters on the N67 and sandbag barriers have been built in Cross Malina County Mayo after the River Deal threatened to burst its banks. Head of Services at Mayo County Council Tom Gilligan 
Fillion says they're keeping a close eye on water levels. I'm monitoring the situation. Uh, I've just come from across Malanga myself. Happily at the moment, I suppose the levels appear to be stabilising. A community in Waterford is coming to terms with the death of a man in his 70s in an early morning house fire. This neighbour has been describing the blaze at Ballytruckle Court. I just got my phone and I phoned the emergencies. This was about half four, quarter to five. And the next thing was then um, the fire brigade man told me that my neighbour was deceased. And it's 150 years since the first ever death in a motor car crash. Irish scientist Mary Ward died on the 31st of August 1869 in Burr, County Offaly. She died instantly when she fell out of her cousin's steam-powered car and under its wheel. She was a talented self-taught microbiologist and the first woman on the Royal Astronomical Society's correspondence list. That's it for now. All news updates are on our website. That's newstalk.com. News Talk Weather. Thanks to the AA. For great value car, home and travel insurance, go to the AA.ie. Sunshine and showers, some heavy with highs of 15 to 17 degrees. Now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. Now you're very welcome back. We are still streaming until five o'clock this evening here on Off the Ball. Uh, we just said goodbye to Stephen Elliott because uh, Louise Quinn is going to be joining us in a few minutes' time to chat about uh, the Republic of Ireland's Euro 2021 qualifying campaign, which is going to get underway in the next few days. Their opening game against Montenegro uh, in Tala this coming week. Dan McDonald of the Irish Independence still with me. Johnny Ward as well. Just qu- qu- quit the crap. Just quit the crap. You're, you're, you're ready Here for this. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> We have it. Finally. Three and three and a half weeks into the new season. Oh yeah, we yeah. Finally we finally have an Irish goal scorer. Let's find out who got it. Chelsea two, Sheffield United one. United back into this game within 90 seconds of the restart. Low cross on the left from Ender Stevens and a really finely hit Robinson, Callum Robinson, right footer, beat the goalkeeper, all ends up. Two goals in the first half from Abraham, but Chelsea's defence caught sleeping at the start of the second half. It's now Chelsea 2, Sheffield United 1. So not only is it an Irish goal, it's an Irish assist as well. Yeah, we we should, don't have a prize for that, though. We should play a longer version of the song <laughs> in that case. Now, just good. to remind everyone, get those texts in, 53106, tell us who scored... And give us your name, and um, we will announce a winner a little bit later on. We have Arthur outside, keeping an eye, a close eye on those text lines. It's just going to be one prize per week, unfortunately, to give... Well, one prize, I think, per goal. Mm. One prize per goal, yeah. What if he scores a hat-trick? We have, we have to play it every time, though, right? Oh, you do, yeah. But if it's the same player? I think... So you get I'm going to get in trouble from the marketing <laughs> department, but, <laughs> but you get I'm, a load I'm of, making an executive decision here. You get a load of Callum <laughs> Robinson texts. What, what goal are they referring to? You know, are they entering the oh, first yeah. goal or the second You've goal? You've thought about this, Sam. Yeah. I, I was going to do... First uh, text after the goal, the goal report has been played, I think is the best way to Even do if it's just someone who was really slow responding to the earlier one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just like they're typing... It's one of these people that's typing really big on their phone. Well, look, they that, eventually you know, get sent off. A broken clock is... They type on their phone like that. They do. It's that whole a broken clock is right twice a day. Thing, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this, this could be their moment. I was going to do the do 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 do. That was the doorbell in The Simpsons, and it was like over and over <laughs> and over, and eventually they started. But um, no, and it'll be interesting if Sheffield, I would have confused people if you'd done that. A lot of people would have gotten the reference. Sheffield United could definitely get some though that game. Chelsea are in a mess, and uh, it's great. In the Stevens and Callum Robinson both involved in the goal. I don't think Chelsea are in a mess. Ah, well, in terms of in terms of where they could have been in previous seasons, they're not going to. Yeah. They've had a bad start, hasn't Man yeah, United. The kids, the kids are doing all right. Can't sign a player. The kids are doing all right. Uh, the Chelsea will be okay. Will they right. finish top four? Uh, uh, well, it doesn't they, look they, like they've United to worry well, about. Well, I mean, it. they've got. I mean, so to finish top four, you need to finish ahead of, well, you know, Arsenal and Manchester United. It's not ridiculous. Maybe Wolves, Leicester could finish. So top four, probably. I mean, Leicester could push for top six, maybe. But um, I, I think it's not ridiculous to think that they could finish in the top four, John. It's not. It's not preposterous. Man, Man United earlier. Um, like, what can you say? I mean, I is, w- is Solskjaer officially like under pressure? Uh, uh, yeah, because like the, even in the commentary, they're alluding to the fact that he was under pressure like three and a half games in. Um, when they went one 0 up, I was intrigued as to how they'd manage the game because uh, they're one 0 up against Southampton. This is a game they should be winning. Um, didn't surprise me at all that Southampton got one back. But then when it was down to 10 men, I just just was checking the odds with 20 minutes to go. It was like, oh, Man United, uh, an extra man, 20 minutes to go in Southampton. They were still 11 to 8 against. So people didn't really have any faith in them with, with 11 men. But a team against 10... See, the problem was the, 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 
the failings that they have or the, the, the feeling that the failing they have is that their inability to maybe open up teams unless, they're, play, unless they're playing on the counter. So mm. actually playing, probably playing against a team of 10 men is the last thing they, they want at the moment yeah. because they're going, to be, they're going to become even more they, compact. They, they brought on Matic like, and um, you know, if, if that's where they're at at the moment, I, I felt sorry for Solskjaer looking at him after the game because I just, there's almost this moment where you look at a guy who's probably, he's probably losing the battle already and I think he's, He's likely a very decent fella who's just a little bit out of his depth. He's, I never thought, I couldn't see why he got the job. He got the job based on a managerial CV that wasn't entitled to have him anywhere near getting a job that big. Since, um, that, since that win against PSG uh, on the 5th of March, played 16, won 3, drawn 4, lost 9. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think there's any guarantee even that another manager would fix it. That's, that's like, the other you know, thing. Like a, a better manager... You know, like okay, Jose Mourinho probably has lost his way a bit, but he couldn't get a a response out of some of those players. And like, if you were to you know get rid of a manager tomorrow and look at out of work managers who've done things at the top of the game, like he would be on the list. You know, and mm-hmm. um, so there's no guarantee. Like there's there's recruitment issues and and decisions that have made over a period of time that have just left him in, in a in a bind. That like you, this whole thing of you see Alexis Sanchez shipped out during the week, yeah. he's still living a massive legacy contract there. Of bad decisions. Pogba is obviously there, and it, it, no matter what you think of him, he's going to be hard to shift if you have a problem with it. So, I mean, whoever goes in there is probably going to face some level of difficulty. Absolutely. Uh, but I mean, what will happen, of course, is that the manager just gets changed. I mean, that's just that's just that's just what happens. Um, we might come back to Manchester United in a little bit, but we are going to shift our attentions now to the Republic of Ireland women's team uh, because they open up their uh, World Cup or Euro 2021 qualifying campaign this coming uh, Tuesday again. Um, they're taking on Montenegro in Tala. And joining us now on the line is Republic of Ireland international defender Louise Quinn. Louise, good afternoon. Hi, Neil. How are you, lads? How's it going, Louise? Um, yeah, so, good. Louise, we're getting this campaign underway. It feels like we've been waiting quite a while to get going on this campaign. Uh, so much has happened since the, the World Cup campaign came to an end. Obviously, Colin Bell's departure. Uh, we have also had, you know, getting to play the world champions in uh, Pasadena, the USA. But... In terms of a competitive fixture, it's felt like this has really been coming around for a while. How long have you been waiting to get out back out there for it? Yeah, literally, it's been a it's been a year now. Um, you know, until we've had an actual kind of competitive fixture and and, and a home game as well. Um, we've had a we we had a few friendlies along the way, and you know, the, I think playing Italy back in you know back in uh, in April was was something that was you know really big for us. They were prepping or April or May, and they were prepping for the World Cup and. You know that's that's kind of the competition you want, but I think we're yeah just extremely excited to kind of bring some of those good performances and now like bring them home and hopefully you know perform perform in Tala on Tuesday. And I see there you're in all your Ireland gear, of course, at the moment. How long have you been kind of together in camp? Yeah, been in camp since uh, since Tuesday, and yeah, just we've been you know out out on the pitch every day. Had a bit of a day off um, yesterday just to kind of. You know, spend a spend a bit of time with friends and family if we needed, and just a bit of bit of chill time. And then that was it. We were back on the pitch this morning, and you know, with again with just a a really good session. Um, I think we're being very thorough and in what we want to do, and it's it's because we just want to start. You know, start how we mean to go on, get a good start, and then keep that momentum going. I've obviously a lot of sympathy um, for the for you in terms of the managerial situation. Um, What's it been like in that regard? You know, you don't have, uh, I guess, the, the the background to to such a game like this. You want you want some sort of solidity, and um, how's it been, kind of post Bell? Yeah, like th- that's that's something I think that, um, be- yeah, it, it hasn't been it hasn't been ideal. But I think actually going to the USA, then it really kind of got that out of our systems. I think kind of any sort of you know, questions asked or if people kind of needed information. I think in USA, we were able to just try, like, clear that up a little bit and then just, and move forward, um, you know, because the we just we just have to be thinking to this Euros and, yeah, you know, it's, it's not it's, it's not an ideal position to be in, but our goal is, is still the exact same. And I think, and that's the thing, I think just how this game has been coming up, a home game, um, and I just think we're able to, you know, it, it really is going to start us start us off well and 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 that's it everyone's been in been in good form sometimes you just need to play the football and you know let let the other people deal with whatever's going on outside and that's all we want to do is there, is there not a sense of frustration though on the i've seen the point made this wouldn't be tolerated if it were the men's team 
yeah, maybe, maybe we just have, you know, that bit more, bit more patience. You know, we, we want them to, to choose the, choose the right, the right person for the job basically. And, and that's it. And, and we are, we're, we are aware of, of the situation, but at the moment there's, there's nothing, nothing we can do. And there wasn't anyone there that, that they thought was right to a, to mm. to be appointed before this game. So so again, why rush it? You know, put like having having Tom in with us. Um, you know, and he's been with us for years now. So it's still everyone is still settled. We know like Tom knows us. We know Tom very well. And yeah, so so that's it. Like we're just we just have to get on with it. There's no point. You know, making a fuss out of it, throwing our throwing our toys out of the pram. Let's just play football and, and get on with it. That's Tom yeah. O'Connor. That's Tom, him. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, yeah, as Tom. as players, Louise. I mean, have you been given an indication? of when you might expect something to happen. I know the FBI last week were talking about meeting someone and believing they were close, but I mean, we've had this before, to be fair, so we were sort of waiting a small bit. I mean, have, have the players as a group been given some kind of indication on a timeline? I think basically it's just going, like it's going to be, it's going to be happening soon. And, and I think it's something where, you know, especially this week, we haven't uh, spoken about it a massive amount because that's it we're just thinking about the game there's no point trying to think of who might come in or what might happen or this that and the other so like I feel that we're we're going to get more information I think after the game and I think that's for us that's that's the best and that's you know that's what we want we just want to we want to work with work with Tom work with you know Stephen Bryce who's in as the assistant as well this week and and that's it and they have us you know set up really well training sessions really good so yeah, that's it. Hopefully, then you know after that, after after the game, we'll start thinking about that. But yeah, I'm I'm not too uh, I'm not too concerned at the moment. I just want to play. Yeah, what's Stephen Rice been like? Actually, you know, I've I've heard that he's a pretty demanding coach at underage level at Rovers. He was like that as a player. How what sort of reaction has he gotten from the players? Yeah, brilliant. You know, he he brings he brings great energy, the information, and that's it. You can tell that you know he was that he was a he was a player. Um, you know, kind of stepping into drills, and you know, even as maybe something is is going on, he'll kind of he'll come in and and speak to the defenders even during the game, and you know, talk about the the movement that their that their wingers or forwards make, and yeah, he's just been brilliant, and I think he's been just really really clear, and yeah, and definitely definitely demands a lot out of us, but that's a that's what we want, um, so yeah, we've really we've really enjoyed having us, having him in, and and I think he's yeah he's fit in he's fit into the group. No bother. Have there been many changes, even just kind of down to just the simple way you're training or anything like that since Tom O'Connor started filling in, like as the caretaker manager for uh, Colin Bell? Um, no, I just think there's just been some some really good drills. I think um, I think what and and exactly that, like what what Colin brought, he brought a massive professionalism and uh, an intensity and. Uh, you know where we where we need to demand off each other in you know in the training sessions because that's what you're going to bring to the pitch and and that was this that's the same sort of thing that Tom Tom thinks as well so we're just we're bringing we're bringing that to the sessions and I think that's it like Stephen is really putting putting that life into it he's got energy so we we bring energy and um yeah so like and that's that's the thing it's been it's been a at the moment a fairly seamless you know seamless changeover and. You know, not many, not many massive changes, but but just quality, really. Uh, to go back to the last game you had, obviously against the the world champions USA. How does how does like Tala Stadium match up against the the Rose Bowl in Pasadena? Yeah, hey, listen, that's, if we get close to what was happening the other night for Rovers, <laughs> you know, the atmosphere will be will be mad. It'll be uh, it'll be incredible. You know, um, yeah, listen, that was that was a uh, definitely one of the biggest and most a game with the biggest amount of atmosphere now I've I think I've probably ever been in. Um it was it was definitely it's definitely a show put on for them and even after each goal there was fireworks going off and I was wondering how many fireworks they put in just to <laughs> thinking how many they might score. But um no listen like they you know they they deserve that sort of um credit they were getting but yeah, listen. There's nothing. You know, we we love being back in Tala, and I, we are we're genuinely excited to to get back there. And you know, we're we're trying to you know beat some of our own records as well with the with the crowds that we can get in. And you know, and that's that's really important to us. And it really started to pick up when we played Northern Ireland last year. Um, you know, with four or four and a half thousand people there. So, yeah, we just want to we want to keep building and and try and make it our own Rose Bowl. 
Did that game against the US kind of just give you an indication about, you know, the level you have to move up to and what you have to do to, to get to, you know, up towards the standards of the best teams in the world? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, you you look at that and, and exactly work with finals. We want to get to these tournaments and, and want to play these teams. And you can see as well, they are they're something extremely special. They are, they seem to be, you know, a bit of head and shoulders kind of, above the rest at the moment and that's and even saying that about the Dutch who are who are obviously quality and I'd, I'd know a lot of those players and um you know but even even to them it was you know they were they were fair they were far off them in the in the final really um yeah so that's you of course you want to get up to that we I feel like we've a long a lot a long way to go but they're they're setting the bar and uh that's that's just the level that we want to get to. I mean, what's what's I mean, what's the, I suppose the ambition? I mean, the obvious ambition for this campaign is to qualify, right? But I mean, the, you know, Germany are a top class team. They've got ten goals in their first in the match bank already. So, like against Montenegro, <laughs> yeah. so I mean, they're they're setting the standard. But I mean, how do you assess this group overall? I mean, you've got Ukraine, I think, in there as the as the pot two team, and you're the third seed. So, like, mm-hmm. what's your sort of assessment of the the strength of the group, maybe relative to the last one, which was really strong? Yeah, exactly. I think it's it's one where 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 we do have a chance. Um, you know, I think Germany have have been going through that bit of, I suppose, change and change of managers and and change of a lot of players. And you know, you've got to wonder how that's how that's going to go for them. But there's still obviously, you know, any team that's gonna that's gonna put ten ten past any team is is in is in good form. And and I think, you know, one that obviously I will be. Looking to is is the U- is the Ukraine. Um, I think they're you know they're vitally vitally important games for us. I think we're you know we're similar sort of teams in ways. I think you know very can be very physical, very hard working, have some absolutely brilliant technical players. Um, and I think that's going to be you know that can really I think kind of decide this this group. But I just think looking at us though, we this is. You can say this and that about the groups, but this is the best position that we've been in in terms of how our players are, in terms of how many people we have gone abroad, gone professional, the the training standards that have even gone up with the you know with the Irish teams and the girls doing their own individual work. And um, so I just th- I even think looking, not even looking at the other teams, looking at us, like we are in our best position. So hopefully we can you know we can take that in. But it's it's it is everyone's going to need to get. In each game, an eight or nine out of ten when they're marking themselves, you know, everyone's got to be top, you know, on their on their top game for us to get the results that we want. Is there is there a feeling we'll say when you're having the chats among yourselves, um, when you look at kind of ladies Gaelic football of late and uh, the crowds that have been going to games? Obviously, you mentioned the World Cup. Um, I certainly believe that ladies sport is going to absolutely like explode over the next 10 or 20 years is there a feeling among the the kind of the game at the moment that you are on the cusp of something of a revolution that there is something special happening yeah absolutely i think the it's it's just natural it's it's natural it's going it's going to happen the talent is there you see when teams or when countries you know push push their their sport or they invest in their sport that the that the growth is is massive and even you can say that the you know the the Dutch are a prime example of that you know the World Cup they were in the the World Cup in 2015 I think it was their first time there didn't do great you know and they just invested in that senior team they've invested they've invested even more then they go on to win the Euros then they're going on to get into the you know the final of the World Cup and you know when when you put that investment and time and thought and facilities you know into into all of this that you know big things big things are going to come and and uh yeah that's it like it's just going to happen and you know to kind of be for us to kind of be the the start of that and hopefully the the catalyst because you really can't see the the growth especially in the last two years has been has been huge um yeah you just want to you want to keep keep pushing it and and trying to get more, you know, girls and women into, you know, into, into sport, whatever mm. it is, and and keep going and and getting fans and and media to to back it all as well. It, they all go hand in hand. I don't know which which one comes first or 
second it's the you know the whole chicken and egg yolk sounds a lot like the League of Ireland really you're just kind of, <laughs> you're just kind of trying yeah, to yeah. Get, get people involved and then get the media to show it more and, and so on and appreciate the quality that's there exactly exactly I think the, the, we're wearing those specs as well. I think we should start doing that. It just gives this intellectual aura to kind of what you're saying. Like, <laughs> is that, yeah, am I, do I look smart? Am I, am I perfect. Yeah, very impressive. Thank <laughs> you. Louise, thanks, thanks you. a million for joining us this afternoon and the very best of luck against Montenegro on Tuesday. Grand, thanks, lads. Nice Cheers. to chat. Thanks, Louise. Thanks. So, Louise Quinn there, speaking ahead of the Republic of Ireland's uh, opening Euro 2021 qualifier against Montenegro big, this Tuesday. Big week for Tala. Like, there's been so much going on. Yeah. And I, I was there last night, uh, 7,000 people at the game, and it's becoming a proper, proper stadium where you really enjoy being there. Obviously, the 21s on Friday, the women's game, um, three, and it's just, it's. It, it's great to have that facility there because you're, it has a good atmosphere when you have sort of five, six thousand there, and the pitch is in great nick. And um, yeah, it's it's going to be a lively time for the for Dublin Twenty Four or whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just going to jump in. We have it another goal between Manchester City and Brighton. It's not an Irish score though, unfortunately, guys. <laughs> uh, to tell us about this one at the Etihad Stadium, Shane Pennington. Manchester City 3, Brighton nil, and Sergio Aguero has his second of the afternoon. He picked up the ball from David Silva just outside the penalty area after good work down the left from Zinchenko and picked his spot from 18 yards, killing the beauty into the right-hand top corner. It's Manchester City 3, Brighton nil. Also uh, full-time at the Principality Stadium in Cardiff, Ireland, beating Wales 22 points to 17. So uh, a win at least to get back on track. Uh, can't really say we've seen too much of it, just a couple of tries. Uh, so tune in tomorrow to get the full debrief. But uh, we'll be back after the break with more from Danny and John. Off the ball on News Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. With Jess Kelly. Coming up this week, we'll hear how technology developed in Ireland is helping to improve literacy rates in children. We'll discuss the move towards electric vehicles and ask if enough's being done to make us go green. Plus, I'll chat with the Kerry company looking to increase the impact of clinical trials. Tech Talk, Tech Talk. with Jess Kelly. Download the podcast now or tune in this evening at five. On News Talk. Exciting afternoons with Harvey Norman. Bring the cinema home with an ultra high definition smart TV and surround sound from Harvey Norman. The cinema experience with no cues and no trailers. I'm Jennifer Kwan, and I'm living proof that NCI is the best career move you can make. Prove to yourself what you can do with National College of Ireland's wide range of full and part time courses. Come to our open evening on Thursday, September 5th from 5 to 7 pm in the IFSC. Call 1850 221 721 or visit ncirl.ie. Now, enjoy genuine no limits data on your phone with Air Mobile. Binge on movies, streaming, and Netflix, dive into all the music you can handle, and share all the stuff you love on social. There really are no limits on how you use your data with new no limits data from Air Mobile. So sign up now. Call 1 800 500 300, go in store, or visit air.ie. Air, let's make possible. No limits data available on selected Air prepay SIM only and bill pay plans. Data allowances while roaming in the EU are subject to fair use. For full details, terms, and fair usage, see air.ie. You told us you don't like cider that's too sweet. And you also told us you don't like cider that's too dry. Well, there's great news for you, because we don't make our delicious Appleman cider either of those things. So now all we have to do is ask you to try it. Simple. <clears throat> Here we go. Order an Appleman cider. Or making this ad was a complete waste of time. Appleman's. The joy in simple. Always drink responsibly. Visit drinkaware.ie. At Energia, we are proud to be the power behind Irish rugby. So as well as bringing positive energy to every game, we're also bringing great savings to everyone who switches to Energia. Save up to €597 Euro when you switch to Ireland's cheapest dual fuel bundle. Available only by going direct to energia.ie or calling 1850 300 700. Energia, the power behind your savings. EAB €1,520 Euro based on average annual usage. 12-month contract, discounted unit rates, standing charge, PSO, levy and carbon tax, T's and C's and early termination fee apply. Valid from August 2019 and subject to change. Verification in T's and C's at energia.ie forward slash EAB. Hey Dylan! I'll give you a euro if you hoover the house. All right, Mum! Dylan? Dylan. Don't get much for a euro these days? You do with Everyday Savers from Dunn Stores. You'll get a huge range of quality everyday items, many for one euro or less. Plus, with our 10 or 50 grocery voucher, you save more each time you shop. Dunn Stores, always better value. 
See online for terms and conditions. Minimum spend required. Hi, I'm PJ from PH Ross. What does design mean to me? Imagine being handed a box of crayons and being told you can only use one colour. Design for me is being able to use every colour in the box and tell a story from the mirrors to the taps to the floor. At PH Ross, whether your bathroom needs refreshing or a total renovation, our staff are here to assist. From concept to completion, PJ and our team are here every step of the way. Our teams strive to create a personalised experience. Discover the bathroom you've always dreamed of, or the bathroom you'd love to dream in. Visit our showroom at BH Ross on the Old Cabra Road and let's begin. The eternal tiles are wood conundrum. Then again, that laminate stuff's supposed to be good. Apparently, you could march a horse through the kitchen and it wouldn't make a dent. Maybe tiles with a wood effect is the way to go. Or the other way around? The thing is, when you get your first home, you always have big plans. Whatever they are, you want to know you can get cracking as soon as you move in. Which is where the Ulster Bank Mortgage Team could help. Talk to us today. We're staying out of the tiles versus wood debate, though. Ulster Bank. Help for what matters. Over 18s and residential mortgages only. Ulster Bank Ireland DAC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Football Index, the football stock market. Remember that first time on the terraces, where it all began. The heroes, the villains, the highs, the lows. All the while, you were learning. Now use that knowledge on Football Index. Join tens of thousands of fans trading the world's top players. Football Index, the game changed. App available, 18 plus, terms and conditions apply, gamble responsibly. Off the ball, this this is News Talk. Yes, you're very welcome back. We are here through till five o'clock on Off the Ball on our usual Premier League Saturday, our football Saturday, uh, and all of our football coverage brought to you by Paddy Power. Uh, for more information on responsible gambling, visit dunlouis.net. Now, during the ad break there, we have had a couple of goals. First of those coming at Selhurst Park, Crystal Palace up against Aston Villa, Ian Beach. Crystal Palace 1, Aston Villa nil. Jordan Ayew, who scored at Old Trafford last weekend, has broken the deadlock against 10-man Villa. They had Trezeguet sent off 15 minutes earlier for a second bookable offence. This time Villa had a free kick. They launched into the Palace penalty area, but Palace countered. Ayew cleverly slipped away from Tyrone Mings and fired a cross goal into the bottom corner. Crystal Palace 1, Aston Villa nil. And there's also been a goal at the King Power Stadium where Leicester were 2-1 up on Bournemouth last time we checked in. Who's got that goal? Derek Clark. Leicester City 3, Bournemouth 1 and it's Jimmy Vardy with his second goal of the afternoon. Leicester catching Bournemouth, playing it out from the back. It was Tielemans with the ball into the box and Vardy just helped it along into the bottom corner. It's Leicester City 3, Bournemouth 1. Congratulations also, I should say, to Liam Mangan from Cork because he is the first ever winner of our Premier League Irish goal scorer competition. Well, don't like listening for three or four weeks just <laughs> on the premise that it might happen. <laughs> His <Yeah>. fingers just <laughs> over the phone. <laughs> Every Saturday looking at the thing on Shane Duffy's on the bench today. Yeah. And that this isn't going to be there's the week. There's definitely someone who had like Shane Duffy ready to paste in. Yeah. And then when they heard it was... Uh, who Callum was Robinson. It? it was Callum Robinson. Oh no, I've missed the prepared. chance now. Yeah, Aaron mention, Connolly off the bench. Aaron Connolly has yeah, come off the bench that. for Brighton. Because Duffy's on the bench, I'm not sure is it a knock or what the story is, but I know they are changing their style, so maybe they felt there might be something different needed for Man City. But yeah, Aaron Connolly did very well during the week, um, scored uh, against Bristol Rovers during the week, and Andoni got sent off last weekend, that sort of silly red card, really mm. bad tackle. So he's suspended for three games now. So there was a feeling that it would be a chance for Connolly. And um, yeah, sure enough, he's he's come off. I mean, they're three 0 down away to Man City. It's a tough gig, but in some ways, and you can you could spin that and go. It's a pressure free gig as well, exactly, yeah. to a degree that just come on for twenty minutes and and have a run at them. I mean, Connolly's style. He's a very. Uh, like when Ireland played Brazil in the Toulon tournament, he's he's a bit fearless. He can be a bit frustrating sometimes in the sense that like he, he can get the head down and and he like he trusts his own ability to go it, uh, go it alone and, and and take people on. When sometimes in the twenty ones like there was other options on around him and you think he's probably got a bit of learning to do. But there's no doubt in the ability that's that's there. So um, it's exciting. Fact that as nineteen, well. yeah. he's yeah. he's made his Premier League debut. We like we've had a couple of I mean, Mark Travers played this year. Keller is uh, on the bench again today. But you know Mark Travers played this year, but. On that actually the team news is in from yeah. um, from Burnley and Liverpool at Turf Moor we'll probably cross over now to get it uh, Adam Jury is there for us 
Liverpool name an unchanged side from the team that beat Arsenal last weekend as they bid to go into the international break on a maximum 12 points. For Burnley, it's just the one change from the lineup that came within minutes of beating Wolves on Sunday. Aaron Lennon comes into midfield for the injured Johan Berg Goodmanson. It's Burnley versus Liverpool at Turf Moor. Yeah, Adam Jury there. I am here alongside uh, Dan McDonnell and Johnny Ward. Danny and Not John. the other way around, as I said there before the ad break. Danny, Danny and John. John. Yeah. I'm getting you I'm still getting used to this. Uh, if we checked into a hotel under fake names, <laughs> <laughs> that would be very, wouldn't be very clever. Um, but yeah, Creeping Kelleher on the bench there as well for Liverpool. Kelleher on the bench, yeah. I mean, just making the point with Connolly that like Irish teenagers playing in the Premier League, you know, there hasn't been too many. But Travers obviously already this year, just yeah. before he turned twenty. Obafemi. Connolly, Obafemi. So um, we've waited a while. As I said, I mean, Kevin Toner, I think, played as a teenager for Villa a couple mm. of years ago. He's back with Pat. So Parrot's going to play this year as well, in all likelihood. You, so you would have thought so. Uh, certainly, maybe in, in the league. At Cup, 17. Mm, so this, it's, things don't look too bad. Like, and it, I think the, the 21s game will tell us a bit about how, how much you know, quality is there because a lot of us are maybe in the dark. But uh, it's going to be exciting. You know, it's, it's, it could be, uh, could be a, big, a big enough week for the future of Irish football in terms of what we have to offer. Um, I'm, I'm very excited by... By, by next Friday and I, I, I do without harping on about it, I think it's a bit of a joke that it's, it's clashing with the FAI Cup and that you have you know if, if, if Galway United fans want to see Jack Byrne um, which is their only chance you know next Friday they won't be able because he's in the Ireland squad he won't How be was able. he last night? Um, he wasn't great actually if Mick McCarthy was there Danny Mandrew he was there yeah. um, Mick Mc sorry Mick McCarthy was there but if he, if he were looking at it he would have Jack I thought um, he's very influential but I thought he tried to force the, bo force the pass a little bit um, Danny Mandrew who I know Shane Supple was, was quite critical of um, he's the other number 10 he was anonymous now the one thing I would say like Talbot's kickouts couldn't get to halfway it was a game completely ruined by the wind um, it, it, it was a game of two halves and it was like an old fashioned if it were a gag game it would have been 12 I think there was a game up north where one team was 4-0 up at half time and they lost 5-4 the other team was 2-0 <laughs> up at half time and lost 4-2 in the championship last night in the north so I imagine there was a, a gale coming in from wherever but um, it wasn't Jack's if you watch the game you wouldn't be wowed by Jack at all but you know I've seen enough in this season to know that he's been very good um, I, I think it's magnificent that a League of Ireland player is is in the squad for this game, that a game that actually matters. And when you see, granted, it's not the same position, but Shane Long isn't in the squad and Jack Byrne is in the squad. And Mick McCarthy went to watch the game. He said he was looking forward to seeing Jack play. Interesting as well, Dan has spoken about this. Mick's comments about he doesn't want Jack picking up. He doesn't want Jack, Jack's not going to be picking the ball up off the number, off the centre back. Yeah. For, I, there was a little bit of, last night you were wondering, Jack knows Mick McCarthy is here and he was a little bit more advanced and he wasn't going back to pick up the ball. Now Rovers have enough deep line players but um, I wouldn't be amazed if Jack was conscious that Mick was there and is slightly played in his promise but yeah. they won the game and that's what matters for Rovers. Do, does he get a run against Bulgaria maybe? I think it's possible. I mean, yeah. it's a 25-man squad. Um, it be interested to see if Jack's free to go and if, if Jack doesn't play on Thursday, is he free to go and play in Galway on Friday and then come back for the, for the Tuesday game? Because I think the Ireland squad will probably be off next Friday mm. and Saturday, so I wouldn't rule it out. I can't see Jack being involved in the Switzerland game because Mick McCarthy has said Alan Judge is ahead of him, clearly ahead of him in his pecking order. So. Last night wouldn't have done that in the change. No, I don't think so. I think, yeah. I, think Jack, I think Jack does get frustrated when he's not involved in games and he, he does try and come a bit deeper as well. But um, no, it wasn't his best night last night. It wasn't Andreo's best night either he's in the 21 squad uh, and barely even gets mentioned because there's so many other interesting attacking players yet at another time you'd be talking about him but last night he just he didn't he didn't do enough and then Bowes got in a situation where Danny Grant their winger was probably coming inside to try and help them out in the middle and they got exposed down that wing so um, wasn't his best day definitely Danny Mandrier 7,000 plus the 7, last night nice record yeah, crowd yeah, for yeah, for record league game for league it crowd should for be talent. said as well like, it wasn't like, I don't think any Rovers fan thinks they're going to win the league it's pretty much yeah. beyond them so it could have been a much bigger game if, if Rovers were three points off Dundalk that could have been sold out where it was a massive game Not, notwithstanding that what was it like May 2017 since they last beat them. Like, Rovers celebrated this like they'd won the cup I mean they were beating yeah. an inferior bow side 1-0 at home in workman like circumstances but, but when they, you haven't done it for two Years, exactly, you know, it's, and it's I think thing, they were really, yeah. really pissed. I mean, there was one moment, young Tierney, a uh, young lad from Ballymun playing for Bowes, I think he could have a bright future, a great attitude about him. And Joey O'Brien absolutely went through him. And Joey O'Brien is what, 32? I think Tierney's <laughs> yeah. 18. And the crowd absolutely loved it. Tierney, 18 years of age, got up, they took the throw, and I was like, this is exactly how football should be played. Yeah, yeah. And it was a real, there was a great atmosphere there. Um, and there's, there's big potential for League of Ireland in Dublin at the moment. 7,000 at that game, Bowes sold out their allocation very, very quickly. If the game matters, 
scattered more could easily have been 10,000 at it. Well, I mean... The, or, you know <laughs> what I mean? And the crowd... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could have done more seats, though, John. Exactly. Yeah. But, um, no, so it's, it's, been, it's, been, um, it's been a good season for football in Dublin, I think. Yeah. Um, we have it another goal at the Etihad Stadium. Man City and Brighton. Shane Pennington. It's Manchester City 4, Brighton 0, and he's barely been on the pitch 30 seconds. And Bernardo Silva has got the fourth goal for the home side. It was Aguero finding him down the left hand side of the penalty area, and he fired across Matt Ryan into the right hand bottom corner of the net. It's Manchester City 4, Brighton 0. It's about time I remind you as well that the OTB team, along with special guests Kevin Kilban, Kieran Donny, and Peter Laurie, are taking on two of the best courses on the planet later this year, the Yaslings and the National, for the first ever Off the Ball Open this November. We're also delighted to add that the brilliant Connor Sketches, aka Connor Moore, is going to be joining us on that trip as well. So the event will involve five nights in a four star hotel, a Peter Laurie golf clinic, gala dinner, and an Off the Ball road show. It's all happening from November 17th to 23rd in Abu Dhabi. And you can sign up for it now at offtheball.com forward slash open. We'll be back for the uh, final part of our show with Dan and Johnny and getting the full time results in. Danny after and John. The break. Don't miss a thing. Update the News Talk app now in the App Store or Google Play Store. Ireland's best mobile network just got better. It's like going to the match with your best mate and then finding out you're sitting beside your favourite ex player and they're like, you know your stuff. And you're like, this is even better. With Vodafone, get 30 gigs of data and even better, a free Samsung Galaxy S10 when you switch to Red Complete. Vodafone, the future is exciting. Ready? Offer available to new Vodafone customers signing up to Red Complete 24-month contract for €60 Euro a month while stocks last. Offer ends 30th of September 2019. See Vodafone.ie for terms. Be confident in the next car you buy. At Dundeal, you can find cars from over 1,000 trusted dealerships nationwide. Now you can search for cars with warranties and monthly finance options to meet your budget. Done deal. Ireland's largest car showroom in the palm of your hand. Listen up, class. Aldi's Play Rugby Sticker promotion is back. Collect official Irish rugby stickers every time you spend €30 Euro in Aldi. Fill your primary school's poster for a chance to win one of two €50,000 prizes or one of ten €10,000 prizes for your school's playing facilities. Tomorrow, Japanese for beginners. Konnichiwa, kids. Konnichiwa, sir. Aldi, official supermarket of the IRFU. Full details at aldi.ie slash play rugby. Promotion runs 10th of August to the 8th of November 2019. Get into Curry's PC World for amazing mega laptop deals for students. Save €170 on the Lenovo C340 2-in-1 laptop with an Intel Pentium processor, now just 419 Get the HP 14-inch laptop with Intel Core i3 processor and 256GB SSD, just 539 Or upgrade to the versatile HP Pavilion X360 with powerful Core i5 processor for just 749 For Ireland's largest range of laptops, get in-store or online at curries.ie. T's and C's are Apply. Football Index, the football stock market. Remember that first time on the terraces, where it all began. The heroes, the villains, the highs, the lows. All the while, you were learning. Now use that knowledge on Football Index. Join tens of thousands of fans trading the world's top players. Football Index, the game changed. App available, 18 plus, terms and conditions apply, gamble responsibly. Brexit has entered its endgame. In this week's Sunday Independent, engage with all sides of the debate with analysis from Owen Harris, Colin McCarthy and Dan O'Brien. In Living, Claudine Keane opens up about Robbie and their friendship with the Beckhams. And in sport, Joe Brawley, Colm O'Rourke and Paul Kimmage have unmissable coverage of Dublin's quest to make football history. Plus exclusive extracts from the autobiography of the man whose goal stopped Kerry's drive for five. The Sunday Independent, the complete read. Off the ball. This this is News Talk. You're very welcome back, uh, Neil Tracy. Oh. I'm sorry, there we go. My microphone is on now. You're very welcome back. Neil Tracy here with you until five o'clock. I'm alongside Dan McDonnell and Johnny Ward as we're coming into the closing stages of our Saturday afternoon Premier League games. Uh, a reminder as well, our football coverage is brought to you with thanks to Paddy Power. For information on responsible gambling, visit dunlouis.net. The two guys beside me are looking ever so slightly distracted. Well, there has been a goal. There was a goal at Stamford Bridge. It was scored by Sheffield United. We are still waiting to find out who got it, though. And it's not, it's not, is it? 
Uh, I, th I think we're going to get some bad news here, guys. Um, unless it was chalked off by VAR. I can't see this confirmed now. We're going to have to wait and see. Elsewhere, it scores in the Premier League at the moment. Uh, 89 minutes on the clock. Uh, Crystal Palace 1, Aston Villa 0. Leicester 3, Bournemouth 1, Man City 4, Brighton and Hove Albion 0. Uh, Newcastle United 1. Uh, is that Frankie Watford Benali one. that used to play for Southampton? That is Francis Benali, yeah. Does he have, did he open like some... Johnny, um, so Johnny's just shouting what's on the television here, to be <laughs> clear. Like, uh, goggles, just, goggles, we need to turn this off. People listening wouldn't be aware of what I don't, I don't, around here. I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. But <laughs> did he open up like a chain of Indian restaurants or something? I'm not sure. Kind of I know he did figure. some incredible Iron Man challenge. Man challenge. I was going to say, the Iron Man challenge Oh, that's, yeah, yeah. Um, iconic uh, back in the days of the Dell, the good old days. Yeah. yeah. Um, we can confirm though that that, uh, that goal was not scored by oh. an Irish player. It's a, a Kurt Zuma own goal, 89 minutes. We'll have a report on that uh, whenever in the next couple of minutes. We do have a full time report in though from the Principality Stadium in Cardiff, where Ireland have got back on track, so to speak, at least. Uh, they've beaten Wales 22 15. Reporting from Cardiff is Willow Callahan. Will 17, Ireland 22. Despite Warren Gatlin's claim that his side would be looking to derail Ireland's World Cup plans here this afternoon, Ireland have got their preparations for Japan back on track with a five-point win over a largely second-string Welsh side in Gatlin's last game in charge at the Principality Stadium. Even taking the makeup of the opposition team into account, head coach Joe Smith will have been relieved to get a response from his players following last week's humbling defeat to England at Twickenham. Though they faded out of the last 20 minutes of the match after being 19 points up, Ireland led the Grand Slam champions by 15 points at three at the break Jacob Stockdale with new haircut on show running in two tries down the left wing his first was crafted by Andrew Conway after a break from prop Dave Kilcoyne in the 18th minute but the second and his 16th international try was all down to the young Ulster wing's own work he seized on to a failed Aaron Shingler offload attempt in the 28th minute and his pace and strength to run the ball home in the corner Jack Carthy won't have done his chances of travelling to Japan any harm today. The Connacht out half scoring five points and getting 80 minutes and a man of the match performance on the occasion of his 27th birthday and first start in Irish Green. Ireland's third try came just before the hour with a fresh front row putting pressure on the Welsh in the scrum and forcing referee Roman Pott to award a penalty try. The host battled back with tries for Rhys Patchell and debutant Owen Lane in the last quarter. Patchell converting both but they've surrendered an 11-game unbeaten run in the Welsh capital, going back to an autumn international loss to the All Blacks in 2017. It's also a first Irish victory in Cardiff since a World Cup warm-up game here four years ago, and two stronger sides are expected next Saturday in Dublin for the final game before the World Cup in Japan. Final score here at the Principality Stadium, Wales 17, Ireland 22. It's, it's all happening, Neil. It is, yeah. We can hear now actually about that uh, Sheffield United equaliser against Chelsea from Andrew Chiel at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea 2, Sheffield United 2, Chelsea have let it slip. Robinson, who scored the goal in the first half, has set this one up for Lise Mousset, darting in to the penalty area with a well-timed run and a really nice right foot flick past the goalkeeper. So it's Chelsea 2, Sheffield United 2. It's all happening. All happening. Mm. Um, it might be all happening as well tomorrow because uh, North London derby. Uh, last time we were there, actually, last season, we sent Stephen Doyle and Gary Breen there as well. We have a little clip. Uh, that we're going to play there. Northland Derby last year, Arsenal and Spurs, Stephen Doyle and Gary Breen. It got fiery. He steps over at Ericsson with the right foot across in. And that's into the goal. It's scored by Eric Dyer at the near post. Tottenham Hotspur of the levels. 15 minutes left to play in this first half. It's Arsenal 1, Tottenham Hotspur 1. That is woeful defending. People will talk about Dyer going in and scoring. The supporters have come on the pitch now. The Arsenal substitutes are having arguments with the Tottenham fans in the far left-hand corner. It's kicking off here. It is a proper North London derby it's now. It's getting really nasty. Aaron Ramsey there, of course, substituting. He's getting a ball. Maurizio Pochettino is running down the touchline. There's Arsenal players in there. There's Tottenham Hotspur players in there. No All surprise. The Stewarts. It's Ali Dali Ali involved again. And one thing I will say, that as soon as Tottenham scored this goal, he runs to the Arsenal fans to celebrate. Similar to what Aubameyang did when he scored the penalty. He's got a hold of the Emirates Stadium to celebrate in front of but he does it in front of the Tottenham fans and they have Tottenham players have obviously identified that and said well listen we'll give you a taste of your own medicine if it does all kick off tomorrow at the Emirates it could be between Stephen Doyle and Gary Green <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was like false advertising there I was expecting you to show to a clip of them having a row about Dublin and Kerry to be honest with Steve and I'm Gary. expecting it tomorrow that's what you should expect they're not even just going to be they're going to be detached Mm. They're, just, they're just going to be looking at phones and not even listening to the, that will happen and it won't even be called on because they'll be checking <laughs> updates but anyway tune in listen to it slightly strange an article about the game as uh, I suppose the aspirations of the two clubs this season um, but they will look on their they will look at the likes in Chelsea and Man U and say like 
the very least, at the very least, with Arsenal, we should be top four. Well, Spurs, I mean, Spurs should should be fine. Sh- Spurs should be fine, but then they did lose to Newcastle last weekend. So they can't win a, the league. They've got a bit. Well, no, I don't yeah. think they're going to win the league. But I mean, they they probably are the third best team. But that at the same time, I mean, they lose last weekend at home. It's probably a proper bounce back match for them now. Mm-hmm. In terms of um, Champions League groups, actually, we barely mentioned them at all today. Um, I think the general consensus was most of the Premier League's team did okay. It did all right, It's a bit yeah. disappointing. Like, you've Man City and Shakhtar again, as you probably had in previous years. You have Liverpool and Napoli again. Obviously, there's good fun with, like, Real Madrid and PSG. And uh, then on the other side, Barca, Inter Milan and... Yeah, like, I, I don't well. really care about the, the the heavyweight Champions League clashes at this stage to a degree. Like, I mean, if you have a group of three teams, then it's interesting. Um, but like, I I much prefer like the Red Star Belgrade stories and stuff like that at this stage. Dynamo Zagreb are in City's group, I think, aren't they? I think, I'm pretty sure they are. Um, so like, there will be a usual array of moaning if there are some one-sided games in there. But I still sort of passionately believe that the Champions League should have those teams in it. Um, unlike Stephen Warner during the week I don't know if you saw <laughs> yeah. he thought the Red Star Belgrade were a bunch full of, of plumbers and electricians of plumbers and electricians so like you know you, you do sometimes I think we sometimes look at the Champions League draw too often through the prism of how English clubs see it um, there's actually some great stories there but we mightn't see them because they won't necessarily be shown in our flagship stations mm-hmm. so um, there, there are you know some, some good angles to the competition and teams that have got into it um, it should be but, but, but they, they, they will naturally but like there's a trade off with that I mean I think that the, the group stage is about that and those teams and yeah they, they will take them heavy defeat some of them but you they're know they'll be, they'll be there there might be the odd story and then the good thing is there's not an over sort of there's not a saturation level of like heavyweight clashes so that later in the year when they come around yeah. you really appreciate you really appreciate it really happens so It'd like Foley, be, um, Foley War games now between like you know two big teams in a group I mean they're good occasions and all but really if they're both going to get through you know, it's it's a chance to watch the best against the best, but it's sort of meaningless. So there is that group, but isn't it Bayern or Borussia Dortmund, Inter and, and Barca? Barca. So like that, that's the group yeah, for that's, you know, that, that's, that's your group is. for the for the fun. But um, there'll be some other quirky stories in there. You'd just be remiss not to mention Linfield. Linfield went out in away yeah. goals to Carabag and uh, young um, Lavery, I think is it Shane Lavery. Shane Lavery, and um, he got three goals over the two legs, scored late on, and like I know they went out, but as moral victories go, that was an incredible achievement against a really really good side and. And um, they can be very proud up in Belfast of getting so close. Full time reports coming in. First of those, the final whistle has gone at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea and Sheffield United. Uh, with the details of that one is Andrew Cheel. Chelsea 2, Sheffield United 2. A fine fight back by United and des- a deserved point. Two goals from the very lively Tammy Abraham put Chelsea in control. Both crisply taken, right footers showing predatory instinct. But for a fine save from Henderson, Abraham would have had a hat trick. Callum Robinson's crisply taken shot a minute into the second half made it an uncomfortable 45 minutes for Chelsea and in added time Robinson set up the equaliser a Kurt Zuma own goal Chelsea 2 Sheffield United 2 So Frank Lampert's for a first win at um, at Stamford Bridge But again like what what has Lampard or Solskjaer done to get that job apart from having played I do not see any he knows re- the club Johnny. I don't see he any relevance the club. in Frank Lampard I think Frank Lampard's a great bloke what do you think of Stephen O'Donnell getting the Pats job um, <laughs> good day, Stephen O'Donnell. what do I think of him getting yeah. the um, I think he's what has he done to get the job uh, I think he is going to be a very good manager I wouldn't so have sacked Harry Kenny no, no, I think he's going to be excellent. Sack Harry Kenny. I'm just saying, you're making the point. They're, they're, like no, Lampard, they're, they're, Lampard no, had they're, an they're, excellent they're, season at Derby yeah, last year. He, he did more than Solskjaer, but they're signing them on the base that they played for the club. I don't, I don't see what that has to do with anything. So no way would Lampard have gotten that job apart from the fact that he... It's like when Sky bring on two players who played for the... Or two ex-players who played for the two relevant clubs because of their unique insight into the game. They've oh, I off, think the Lampard one makes way more sense than Solskjaer. I don't think Lampard, either makes sense. Chelsea, Chelsea should be, should no, be, Chelsea should be able to get a bigger manager than that. Let me finish Chelsea have chewed up and spat out managers mm. and the one thing about Lampard is that he probably knows Abramovich and he knows the club he's been a part of that mm. culture and ethos mm. around the club that one makes way more sense to me than the, than the Solskjaer I, I, I agree. Chelsea's quirky and there's also a transfer ban so a younger manager with younger players you can you can build something around mm. that I, I agree with you on the other one but not, not on, I think Lampard you've been a bit hard it's a bad start no, I, I, I'm not and Neil needs to get reports in it's it's very urgently start, no. we are very up urgently. against the clock it is uh, these, four minutes these, both these teams could finish um, out of the bottom four very easily this season. Oh, Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so the final whistle has got the Adrian Stadium four, as well. Four, Man yeah. City and Brighton with the details of that one. Shane Pennington. Manchester City 4, Brighton nil, and Pep Guardiola's men record their first home league win of the season and in truth it never looked in any doubt. 
Kevin De Bruyne fired the house in front after just two minutes and they doubled their advantage two minutes before the break when Aguero fired home from 12 yards. Aguero then got his second and City's third but a beautiful curled effort and just 20 seconds after coming on as a sub Bernardo Silva fired home a fourth. City have now scored 215 goals in their last 80 Premier League games. Quite a stat. Manchester City 4, Brighton 0. Also a victory this afternoon for West Ham United. They have beaten Norwich 2-0. Guy Swindles is at the London Stadium. West Ham 2, Norwich 0. Both sides wanted to attack throughout, so this was an entertaining game. West Ham's finishing was just better. Sebastian Haller gave them a first half lead. He's third goal of the season. And then after a long recovery from injury, well, certainly Andre Yarmolenko celebrated when he doubled that lead. Norwich kept creating, though. Indeed, they hit the post in time added on at the end of the match. But if it hadn't been for their keeper, Tim Krul, with a series of fine saves, none better than the one that kept out a Lanzini header, it would have been more than West Ham 2, Norwich 0. Also, final whistle at St James's Park, Newcastle and Watford, the bottom two in the Premier League at the moment. Which way has that one gone, Stephen Goldsmith? Newcastle 1, Watford 1. A share of the spoils for two sides who will have hoped for more. Watford had the chances for more goals in the first half. Newcastle had some opportunities in the second half. Though Pereira came the closest to winning it late on for Watford, his shot tipped round the post. Will Hughes scored from close range after two minutes for the visitors and Fabian Scher levelled with a neat finish inside the box for Newcastle. It finished Newcastle 1, Watford 1. The final whistle's also gone for Crystal Palace. They've followed up their uh, impressive win against Manchester United last week with another three points uh, at their game against Aston Villa at Selhurst Park is Ian Beach. Crystal Palace won. Aston Villa nil. Jordan Ayew, a Crystal Palace hero for the second Premier League game in a row. He scored at Manchester United last weekend and this week is the winner against Aston Villa. But this game has ended in controversy. Villa reduced to 10 men with about half an hour left. Trezeguet sent off for a second yellow card offence. And then right at the end, Henry Lansbury, a substitute, put the ball in the net. But the goal was ruled out. Villa are incensed, but it finishes Palace 1, Villa nil. And the other full-time score this afternoon, Leicester City have beaten Bournemouth by three goals to one this afternoon. Uh, that pretty much brings up uh, the end of our end of the show for us, uh, Dan. Happy birthday and thanks for Thank coming you, in. Neil. Thanks for giving up your birthday as well. That's fine, yeah. Listen, it's not a big one. So. You've, you've had enough of them already, you know. I've had, had too many birthdays. You only really have like, so you're 37, you've like three or four big birthdays left. If even. Max. If even. Max, yeah. Like yourself, John. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty grim. Mm. Um, Neil is wearing shorts today. The, the summer is just about hanging on. Neil wants, uh, wants, to, close wants to close the show. October and November. Guys, I'm going to have to jump in. We are going to have to say goodbye. We'll be back again tomorrow. Joe Malloy will be there uh, for us. Anthony Moyles is going to be at Croke Park watching the All Ireland final. And we have Stephen Doyle and Gary Breen at the Emirates for Arsenal and Spurs, Everton, and Wolves as well. Across Ireland on 106 to 108 FM and at newstalk.com. This is News Talk. Good evening, I'm Tina Gates. The Sinn Féin president believes there is now a peaceful and democratic pathway to Irish unity. However, speaking on the 25th anniversary of the 1994 IRA ceasefire, 